I'm really excited to have you here and we are going to have a fantastic journey together. I just want to introduce myself quickly and give you an outline of the course. My name is Shad Raju and I'm a RPA developer and I'm the lead instructor at Excel Cult. I have been in this field since three years. To date, I have taught around 7,000 people in person and online combined. And I'm so excited that I have the privilege of being the instructor for you for this course. It doesn't matter if you have never programmed before because I'm going to start at the beginning and I will take you step by step through the process and you'll be able to understand every single line of code that we will write together. As a student of this course, you're going to save yourself a lot of time because instead of dealing with the outdated, incomprehensible tutorials, you will have the access to the updated version of UiPath. And through this, you'll be able to go from beginner to the mastery. By the end of the course, you'll be able to build awesome robots by yourself and we'll be building on the way around eight projects, which will give you enough confidence to take on a job as an RPA developer. Check out what my past students had to say about the course content. As a student of this course, now you have access to everything that you need to learn to code and to become an RPA developer, a professional RPA developer. So what are you still waiting for? Join me on the next lesson and let's get started. Hey, uh, so let's learn about what is RPA and why RPA. Okay, let's quickly understand it. So here is a slide where there's a person being helped by robots. How helpful it would be, right? So if you're getting helped by someone else, okay, for whom you have to just pay once and do some maintenance and he will do a lot of things for you which actually saves you a lot of time which can be invested somewhere else right so i would definitely enjoy such a situation okay i'm being helped by someone else or some robots rather than being someone okay when i say uh, robots right this is something that you will get into your mind if i'm not wrong moving ahead so that is what what rpa is okay in simple terms rpa can be defined as a software that actually mimics the human actions whatever user performs on the screen right uh, that an rpa can do and whatever can be done through backend it can also do that okay which will eventually save us time and also the number one thing it will increase the efficiency Right, so a person can't be working 24 by 7, but a bot can. Okay, it actually needs the power to work, the electricity to work, and the infrastructure ready for him. But it's not like human, where human can actually will not work for that much time, right? So there are different constraints that comes along the way. Moving ahead, as I have told, right, it's capabilities. When I say capabilities, it can be like it can log into a system and it can start entering the data. Data entry thing is what it can do. And it can also perform some actions, the backend, like moving files, connecting to databases and sending out attachments and all these things. And the best thing is it can also be integrated with hundreds and thousands of applications seamlessly. So you just have to have some integration ready for that and it will work like magic. Got it right. So that's what you can expect. And coming to the benefits of RPA. Oh, just see. Just see the number of benefits that you actually get from RPA. So it will actually a cost cutting technology. First thing that I just want to mention. And then comes the no coding required part because uh, it's just a no code platform which can be used by anyone who is just good at the basics of our programming and a bit knowledgeable when it comes to what you say the business the domain knowledge right he can take it up and he can just start automating the processes 
and then comes the accuracy. So suppose there's a person working on a project and uh, he just gets sleepy and he sleep. Okay, and he's feeling a bit asleep and he enters wrong data. So that doesn't happen with RPA because it's completely rule based. Okay, there is no chance of the calculations going wrong and it continuously works as long as the situation supports the bot. Okay, so it will definitely increase the productivity rate, right? So it is also a compliance uh, supportive. So where you can actually have the log audit logs being recorded, okay? Anything when you feel uh, something has been done wrongly or which shouldn't actually happen. Okay, in this case, you can just go back to the audit logs and look at what has actually gone wrong. Okay, and then comes so you can also uh, set some security constraints that you have for yourself. After that, it will so this all uh, this all are the things that you have to know about. Okay, when it comes to benefits of RPA, then immediately if I just go and you might be wondering where I can actually implement this, right? So that's where I just want to take you through a few of the examples. Okay, it can be used in human resources where it can be, as you can see, right, it can be used in onboarding, offboarding and the policy submissions. All this mundane work can be taken out from the system and can be given to the bot. Okay, then comes healthcare. Okay, here there are a lot of uh, processes that we might come across when if I think you have, uh, if any time you have visited any uh, healthcare industry or healthcare system maybe in hospital or somewhere else you'll find all this mentioned processes going on there okay claims okay record uh, people actually submit claims right kind of thing and customer care and then account management billing reporting everything you can actually see over there can be automated and then comes finance and then come customer care even verification of even the KYC, right? All these things can be done. Then moving ahead, and this must be something that you might be interested in if you're trying to get your hands dirty with RPA, okay? You should actually know the benefits of it, first of all. So this is what is the growth of RPA, as you can see, starting from 2020, if you see the graph, estimated graph, it goes to 23 billion, okay? Uh, Okay, and then you can see the what opportunities that you might get if you are good at RPA. Okay, you can be developers, you can be a team leader, or you can be a consultant, project manager, architects, and many roles. Okay, uh, if I just take you back to at least five years, right? At that time, there were no many uh, specific roles to a person, but right now we can find all this openings and all these vacancies in different organizations available okay and i have tried to mention a small statement here as this is rpa wave is just started okay a lot of people tell that it's saturated but it's not okay there are a lot of opportunities still there and there are there is an what you say a scarcity of people with good knowledge okay so you can definitely grab that opportunity then moving ahead, uh, there is a thing called tools, right? Uh, so whenever you want to implement something, you should have that with you ready. So that is what will be provided by all these tools. See, there are different tools available in the market that will actually help you start off with the RPA technology. Okay, and some of them are like Automation Anywhere, UiPath, Blue Prism, work fusion and soft motive and other things got it right so here yeah. so all the theoretical part is done let me take you through some real life examples where you can start using rpa when i say rp yeah let me uh, take you through what you will be able to do with RPA, okay? Suppose you are a person who is trying to apply for jobs and you don't want to log into LinkedIn every day and search for the top 10 results, right? So you can just write a bot for it. I'll just try to take you through that example. 
yeah here i am so suppose uh, you're a person who is trying to just uh, have a look at the jobs available for rpa you can you go to a site here and then you search for jobs and then you come here and search for rpa developers right so here once you click that i don't know what has happened yeah fine there are results this many results okay 8212 results and there are some filters definitely you would like to apply some filters right you don't want to go to post that were like posted a year back so you'll just apply past 24 hours show results and then whatever level you are at i'll just select associate we are just narrowing down these things right and the job type full time or contract definitely you will choose full time okay and then you will just go through each of this and you will try to look at what exactly is the job description and all that so this is a time taking process if you just feel take a feel of it so this whole things can be automated by using rpa okay you just have to create a bot that will do everything for you starting from the logging to the email sending you can just have all these things being sent to your email and whenever you're free you can just give a glance at it okay that's how simple it would be wasn't that interesting if that was interesting that let's move to the other one okay then comes account closure processing so have you ever uh, gone through a process of account closure in any bank so there are some documents that will be collected from you okay and that will be processed in the backend so there is a person sitting backend who actually uh, take all the details from you and check if that is available in the system if it is available then it has to be sent to different people around the organizations different managers and delivery managers through whom you will be able to close your account okay because there are different policies at different banks so they want to talk to you on your feedback and all those things so everything right uh, starting from checking your details if you really exist in the systems bank systems to sending out the email to different concerned persons and then coming back to you everything at least a part of it can be automated using rpa so that's that's a couple of uh, examples that i thought of taking up okay during the introduction so that you can relate a few use cases that you have come across yeah that was about rpa and its benefits So we have seen a lot of people who are confused about the RPA life cycle. So just to simplify that, we have a small presentation on that. So the RPA life cycle on a broader level will consist of all these six phases, taking from process identification to the maintenance. Let's try to dig into each of these phases. First phase process identification and this thing they will try to identify a process which can be automated and then once it is gathered then we will dig deeper into the requirement gathering stage where we will try to understand the process that we are trying to automate and then if it's done the next step will be getting the approvals from the stakeholders and the business so that we can go forward and implement it and if it's done then we will try to obtain the access to the required applications that we are intended to use and the phase two which is design here the major thing that we will deal is we'll work on obtaining the process information and designing the to be process flow and we will try to understand the expected exceptions and as a second thing, we will try to create various documents that will actually illustrate the process that we are trying to automate. The documents might be PDD and SDD. And as a final step, we'll try to get the sign off from the SMEs 
for all the documents that we have prepared so that we are confident that whatever we have gathered, the information that we have gathered is all true. Then comes the development phase. Here, the development team will start off with the implementation. Then they will perform few unit tests on the developed code. And as a final thing, they will try to integrate the smaller modules developed by the team members to make up a fully functional code. And finally, they will have a peer code review session through which they will try to improve the solution and will try to optimize this as much as possible. Once that is done, we are into the phase four, which is testing and UA team. Here, the QA team will try to prepare the test cases and will try to get them approved. And as a second step right here, they will try to execute these test cases and will keep a track of the bugs that they might face during the execution of those test cases. Then we will try to prepare the production readiness documents and the user manuals, which can help the business team to handle the process and to better understand the automated process. And as a step five, we have the deployment. This is the stage where the bots are deployed into the production environment and yeah, here is where we are, we will try to uh, like transfer everything from the uh, client side, okay, from the development team to the business. And here we are into phase six, which is maintenance. This is the final stage and here we will just keep an eye on the automated process and will look for any possible improvements. Improvements like improvements in the performance, security enhancements, and if there are any change requests that we might get, will be taken care of in this particular stage. So that was about the life cycle. So coming to the duration of an RPA project, it might go from like seven days from to 70 days. Okay, so that's the general time span of a project in RPA. So that was about the RPA life cycle. Hope the presentation has helped you to understand it. Thanks. Guys, a good uh, news for you would be if you are using Windows 10 and 11, the Microsoft Power Automate desktop is completely free. And if you have Windows 11, you might just go to the search tab and you can search for Power Automate. You would find it there. So this is how you'd be able to find it. If it's not Windows 11 and if you are currently using Windows 10, then you can go ahead and just follow the steps that I'll be explaining it to you. And through that, you'll be able to install Microsoft Power Automate Desktop right in your laptop. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and install the Power Automate software. So this is our Google here. So you just have to type Microsoft Power Automate Desktop and you can start installing it. So just type this and just select the first option which says learn.microsoft.com and from right here just click on this particular link and it will start downloading the software for us this is an executable file once it has been downloaded you will find something similar to this so you can just start double clicking on it and it will launch the installer the setup installer so this is how you might find the screen so these are a few default settings that we can see if you are willing to change them you can change them or there's no need of changing any of those things so we can go ahead so this is where this will be installed into this particular folder i'm just selecting install and i'll just go ahead so as soon as this is done 
will be able to find the next screen. It might take a while. Great. So it has been successfully installed. So there are few things that we have to actually take care of. If maybe in the future, because you will be automating something, you might end up using Google Chrome or Edge. So it's better to install this particular extensions. The way to do that is just click on this Google Chrome. It will just take you through the Chrome extension of Power Automate. And because it is already there, it's showing me this option. I'll just remove it. Let me remove this. Yeah, so this is how it might look for you. Just click on Add to Chrome and just click on Add Extension and it should be there for you. And similar to that, you can do it for Edge also and then Launch App. So that's it, guys. So this is how you'll be able to install Power Automate on your system. So it is asking me to update it. Maybe for now, I'll just leave it. You can click on update if it comes for you. So this is how the screen will look like the home screen where we can see all these tutorials, useful links and all this. Because this is the first time that I'm installing this particular application in my system. It will be looking like this even for you if you are installing it for the first time. And then these are a few examples that you can go through so that you can kickstart your journey. So that's all guys. Let's go ahead and start exploring it. So now we have our application ready. So the next step that we have to do is we have to sign in into this particular application that is Power Automate Desktop. So right now I am using Sharat Kumar Raju at the rate outlook.com. So here instead of this your personal email ID you can also use your corporate email ID. So if you don't have your personal ID at, on the name of Outlook, you can just go ahead and navigate yourself to Microsoft account and start creating your own account there. Navigate to this particular URL and click on sign in. You'll be able to see this particular option called create one and start creating your own account there. Going back to our application so i'm just clicking on sign in and it will just ask the password so i'm just entering it here and that's it i should be able to sign into this particular application just make sure that you're able to log in if you are not just try to figure out what was the error and it's a simple process so shouldn't be a much of headache here and then moving ahead, we can just click on new flow. Let's give it a name called test. And it should open up a new window. Yeah. So there are only few things that you should be familiar with on the screen that we can see right now. The actions panel, the workspace, the variables panel and few things on the ribbon. Let's look at this thing first. So the file tab will allow us to save and exit out of this particular application. And then comes edit. So this would be similar to the options that you might have in your notepad any, in any other application. So copy, paste, select all and all this. The basic ones. Then comes debug. If you are new to programming, then debug is an option available in all the programming languages, which will allow you to have control over your code. Suppose that tomorrow you have an issue in your code and you want to look into a specific part of the code. Then you can use debug to make sure that you understand what's exactly happening inside your code and figure out and fix it. So this thing will definitely looking into it in the future. So no worries. Then comes tools. So this will allow you to record your 
automations which we'll be soon looking into and if you haven't installed the browser extensions please do it through here or you can do it as per your needs and then comes views so view is something that you can look at it here these are the things that comes under views okay then once we are done with that let's get into the actions panel actions are small modules that will help you automate your task they're nothing but the tools okay so suppose tomorrow you have to build something suppose you want to build a house you need bricks you need cement maybe you need steel and many of those things so these are those things you can consider them as cements bricks steel and the other items inside your house so if i just go into each one of them there are a lot of them as you can see okay each one of them you can use as per your requirement so if you are dealing with say uh, files and folders you can end up using this activities here are the actions here and if you're dealing with ui actions you can use this if it's an windows task then you can use this if it's an other thing then you can use the other ones then comes http which if you are dealing with api calls you can end up using this and these are few things related to browser automation and if you are using excel in your process you might be interested in using this activities and if it's database then this and emails then this and this way this particular activities will be able to help you with your development time because these are already pre-built and available to you you'd be able to rapidly implement whatever tasks that you want to have right away at your desk and then moving ahead this is what we call workspace workspace in simple terms is something where all your actions will be in suppose if you want to automate something related to excel then you can just drop it here and it will be asking for some inputs and you can give them and that will be there so whenever you implement a project whatever you are trying to communicate with it can be a web application a desktop application or something else in that case all your actions will be here sequentially and subflows is something which we will use to break down our project so here you can save it you can run it you can debug it and all these things okay quite simple and then as you can see here views okay it had variables variables if you are new to programming are just a storage buckets okay if you want to store something maybe if you want to store something like water you use bottle so in this particular programming to save some value you use variables that's it keep that in mind soon we will explore them and then if you are getting it from somewhere and giving it to something then you use input output variables and if it's just inside this particular flow then you use flow variables and then we have ui elements most of our automations are on web applications and sometimes on erp systems and also desktop applications here uh, the computer that we have this particular computer has to communicate with those particular applications for them to automate it but then because if there is something on the screen and i have to click it how would i do it because i have eyes and i'm able to see by god's grace so i would be able to click on that particular click if i have to click on save i can just over my cursor here and just click it but how would a robot know it or how would a computer know it it has to know by some some method okay and definitely as we go ahead i'll just let you know 
how this particular system understands that particular button right here okay so those particular things comes here we have to add each one of this if i want to click on save i have to add this save to this repository we have and if i want to click on run this also has to be added here before we perform any action this we will definitely look into it and then we have images images is nothing but whenever we are working with a particular thing called image in our this thing we have to capture it because sometimes we also deal with images when we are trying to automate some application and we don't have access to its ui elements we capture all those images and have the image automation being done and whatever images that are related to this particular project will be displayed right here that was the introduction to the user interface of this power automate desktop that's all guys let's go ahead now as we are already familiar with the basic user interface of microsoft power automate desktop let's go ahead and implement a first robot so at this stage of time you don't have to be able to understand everything that i'm going to do right now is just to show you how the automation works okay let's go ahead now what we will try to do is we'll try to launch the chrome and open google in it and go ahead and search for amazon stock price and just click on enter so this is where i'll be displayed the stock price of amazon.com and i would like to fetch this information from the screen and display it on the screen let's go ahead and try to do this particular task by using the tool that we have at hand which is microsoft power automate desktop so we are back to our tool the first thing that we have to do is we have to launch a browser and then open up google for that we have few activities or few actions with us in the tool that we are using right now the first one being launch new chrome this will help us launch a new instance of chrome with the url that we want so the launch mode will be a new instance let it be and the url that we want for us it would be google.com so i'm just simply copying it and i'll paste it In the windows state let it be maximized these are few of the parameters that we have to pass on to all the activities or all the actions that we'll be using in our automation similar to what we have in launch new chrome action we will have it for the rest of them too so i'll just click on save as you can see it has actually created a variable called browser this is coming out from this because tomorrow you might be launching two to three websites uh, two to three browsers and you want to differentiate right which one to close and which one to keep it open for that differentiation it starts creating some variables okay you can you can also modify them if you don't want it to be browser you can just change it to any other name maybe browser one two three or whatever fine uh no worries so this is something that will be soon understanding and then once we do this particular thing i'll try to run it let's see if it's capable of opening chrome and google great as you can see the bot the software bot was able to open the browser for us and then going ahead the next thing that we want is we want to type something into it and this can be done by using an action called populate as soon as i start typing the action name it will suggest few things to us so this is something that i would like to go ahead with populate text field 
on web page because we are trying to automate a web page and it will by default take up the browser instance that is browser for us here which is coming from launch new chrome action and then uh, ui element so this ui element is nothing but this particular action is asking us where it should perform this action where should it actually type so we have to actually point it out we can just go ahead and use this option add ui element to spy this particular text box don't worry so if you don't understand what exactly is happening right now don't worry we'll be going into them soon to understand them from a deeper perspective so we have to just point this particular text area and press ctrl and click left click so this is how a ui element will look like okay in the future we'll be going ahead and modifying this ui elements as per our requirement and all that so what do we exactly want to type i want to type amazon stock price okay and then let's go ahead and save it so once this is done let's go ahead and execute this particular flow so it has launched google.com and it should enter amazon stock price great it has done that so next thing that we have to do is we have to click enter so here for us to click the enter button we can use the action called send okay as soon as i just start typing send it will suggest me few things we have to use this and here we have to pass the ui element where exactly we have to enter and i'll go ahead and start indicating the ui element where we have to click enter i'll just press ctrl and left click there it is what i have to send i have to send the enter key right i will click here go to this and here i have the button enter and then just save it so for now what this flow will do is it will just launch chrome and populate the text field over there and just click on enter and once that is done we just want to fetch the information in the next page which can be done by using get details action so this is how it looks like you can go ahead and choose the one that is very appropriate for our task i'm right here and let's go back to chrome so once we click on enter it has to fetch this information so i'll just select the browser instance which is browser fine and then i'll click on add ui element let me drag it to the right and yeah as you can see it is highlighting the field that we want to extract so i'll just hold control key and then click left great so the attribute name would be own text and this will be saved into this particular attribute so I'll just go ahead and change it to maybe my value and then click on enter and then save it and the last thing that i have to do is i have to display it on the screen so let's go ahead and do it i'll just drag it and i have to pass the value that i have which is my value for us because my value is are should be available in this particular variable called my value i'll go here and just click on this particular icon here and just select this and that's all guys so we can keep adding all this uh, fields uh, but that is not necessary for now we'll just save it i'll close all the instances of this 
and I'll try to run it once again. And it should launch the Chrome and then Google site and then type Amazon stock price and then click on enter. Great, it's happening. And then it should fetch the amount. Great. Wasn't it cool? Because the bot is able to do it for you and you should be free from your routine work. It's just a tip of the iceberg. You can just imagine how much time you can save and use it in a productive way if you can learn RPA tools and start using them. So why wait? Let's go ahead and learn how to automate simple to complex business processes. Hey, welcome. So many a times you might run into errors, bugs and issues. So you might prefer to compare your code with some well working code. It always happens with me too. So for your reference, I'll try to attach the code at the end of each project. Let me show you how you can utilize it. I'll be placing the code in a text file like this. You can just go into it and then do the control A, control C and open your or automate desktop and then click on new flow, name something and then click on create. And once the workspace is ready, you can just paste it, control V. So the code will be available for you. To have a look at it this is something that i'll be providing at the end of each project so that you can compare it with your own code if you find something not working out you can go have a look at each of these actions double click on them and look at it and then compare it hope this helps you as you progress all the best for your future implementations so if you are unable to understand whatever I have just explained you. Don't worry if you are unable to understand this at this point of time. You will be able to do all these things as you progress through the projects. All the bets. Stay with me and I'll make you a content RPA developer in another 5 hours that you are going to spend with me. As we have already seen how to install the software, and we are also aware of the user interface of Microsoft Power Automate. Let's go ahead and quickly get ourselves into implementing the projects. As a part of it, the first project that we'll be working is Books Data Scraping Process. Here, this project is there to introduce you to the Power Automate or the RPA world, where you will just use the recorders available in the software to implement the tasks that we are planning to automate. For that, we will start by launching the website which we have at hand, openlibrary.org. As soon as you launch it, it will ask you for the genre. So once you enter it and hit the search button, you will be displayed few results. And you have to scrape them all, the title along with the author. So once that is done, the interesting part that we actually want is we have to write that data back to the Excel. That's all. This would be your first RPA implementation if you are not aware of RPA. Else if you are already familiar with any other RPA tool, then it will be a first time experience for you where you will be actually using power automate desktop let's go ahead and anything that we do as a human we definitely ask for what we will learn or what would be the game right so these are few things that i just want to clarify on you will be learning how to use power automate desktops web recorder and you will also understand what is a variable and how to use them and you'll also understand how to write some data that we have to the Excel using Power Automate Desktop. 
and the other one, the last one, we'll learn data scraping. So that is what this task is all about. Great. So let's go ahead and let's implement it. Power Automate for desktop. And here it's, it's the home screen here. We will just go ahead and click on new flow. A project would be books data scraping process. Then I'll just click on create and the workspace for us should be ready in another few seconds. Here we go. This is a blank project that we have with us and let's go ahead and implement whatever we need. The first thing that I would like to go ahead with is I'll use the recorder option that you can see right here. I'll just click on it because we have the agenda at hand that is to launch the website and then search for a genre and then fetch those details right we have this particular option coming up which is recorder and then the number one step that we have to do is launch openlibrary.org for that i'm just going ahead i've just clicked this option to get this particular options and then i'll just go ahead with chrome for now if you don't have Power Automate desktop extension available on your Chrome or Firefox, whatever you're using, please install it as directed in the previous lecture. I'm just clicking on this and it launches a browser instance and here I'll just click open and then enter. Great. So this is the website from which we will be scraping the details. So now I'll just start the recording and I'll just move it to the right. And as you can see, it highlights different elements on the website. For now, we are only interested in typing a genre here. So let me do it by using my keyboard. I'll just, you can just click on that uh, type box and start typing it. Okay, for me it's love and I'll hover the mouse onto this magnifying glass and just click on submit. As you can see, as I was performing some actions on the screen, it was generating few things on this particular window. What are they? So it says first launch the Chrome and navigate to this. That is what we have done. And then what we have done is we have we made sure that the open library was already there before we clicked on record okay that is one thing that you have to actually keep in mind and then after that i've clicked on recording and then started entering this detail so here the blank page a blank browser page was replaced with the website and then we were populating the text into web page that is recorded as this particular activity populate whatever we have been typing which was love into this particular text box is what it is telling and after that i have clicked on submit this is what is mentioned here these are the steps being generated by the actions that we are performing on the websites so this is also done and we have been given this many results for our genre love okay and then you can just go ahead here you can see there are a lot of results number one thing that we want is we want to fetch this particular title and the author of it and write it back to excel so let's go ahead and as you hover over this particular values actually i have done it earlier also so i found as you just hover around right you will see the tags being changed right now it's anchor and if i just move to the right it shows header 3. when i was considering header 3 it was not working so i just go ahead with anchor you come to the middle and it will be anchor then just right click and it will just show you a few options just go to extract element so this is the header that we are 
trying to extract. It says get inner text of this. But is that our task? No. We have to fetch all of this on this first page. So that is what we will do. We will go to the other and make sure that it displays anchor and then extract element and then do this thing. As you can see, it says it is extracting the records in the form of simple variable and store in this. So is this we want? No. We have we, what we are exactly doing here. We are trying to give the robot a pattern so that it can fetch all the names or all the titles here. So let me go ahead and just extract this too so that this will be given in the form of table. Okay, as you can see, extract results in the form of a list and store it in this because we only have titles for now. It is storing it as a list. That is what we do, right? If we only have a particular sequence, then we just take a list. So I'll just go ahead and also try to extract this values, the author. I'll just right click and extract this. As you can see, it has started catching the pattern here. Okay, so it has created two columns for us in a table and stored it in as output table. If you are confused about what is a variable, variable is nothing but a container into which you put values. Tomorrow, if you have maybe a string and you want to use it somewhere, you store it and whenever the time comes, you use it. It's just a bucket kind of thing, okay? Whenever maybe you carry a plastic bag with you, okay? When you go to a market, what is the purpose of it? You just carry it so that you can put some things into it when you come back or when you return from the market. Or simply as I have already told, you have a bottle. What's the purpose of bottle to carry some water? The purpose of variable is the same. It's there just to carry the information. Okay, great. So what I'll do is, then what we have to do i'll just click on done because this is what we were expecting okay so we have all these steps as you can see it is launching the website populate text field click on submit and then this is not needed as you can see we are already clicking it and it is again navigating to this sometimes what happens is there are few activities that are generated which are not needed whenever we use a recorder right these things are quite common so you can just delete this if you have that okay for me it has come so i've deleted it make sure that you only have these things and this is our automation tasks for now so i'll just click on done as you can see on the workspace we have all those activities or all those actions that i've just performed it is launching Chrome, populating this, clicking on that, extracting the results. Let's go ahead and see if it's working. Let me close the other instances of it. I'm just closing it and click on run. So it should launch Chrome and open open library. And then it will search for love. And there we are, it has opened the results and the back end, it is trying to fetch a scrape the details. It should be done, I guess. So let me go back to this. As you can see, the output here says there are 20 rows and two columns. Let me click on, just double click on that and you'd be able to see the results. Awesome. See how much time you can save when you were given such an activity at your work. This is just the tip of the iceberg is what I'm telling. There's a lot of things that you can do. Be ready to explore. Okay. So I'll just close it and we have these things with us. And the final thing that we have to have is we have to save these results to an Excel. That is our final agenda, right? So that is something that we'll do right now. Before doing that, I'll just go through each one of them so that you can understand this actions in more detail. 
it says this launch a new browser right whenever you click an action you'll be able to see different things associated with it launch mode so there are two options available to us the first one where we are trying to launch a new chrome instance and the second one where we are trying to use the existing instance okay for because if you might be having a browser open already and you don't want to open another tab in that case you can go ahead and use attach to running instance for now let's go ahead with launch new instance and then this is the url that we have and the windows state it can be normal or if you want it to be maximized the window you can just select this and this particular thing gives out an output called browser what is a browser here it's a variable produced by this particular action what is the need for it to be here because suppose you are currently working with um, say amazon ebay and many other instances and you're trying to fetch all the information from that tomorrow if you launch amazon and then ebay so how would a computer know that you want to close only the first instance that you have opened this is through this okay it stores the session of it that is the usage of it we'll just click on save and the next one is populate text field on web browser so you can see we are using the same instance from the above action and then this is the ui element this is something that we'll soon look into and then i'm just typing love there and that's it I'm just double clicking it here. This is the instance that we'll be working with, and this is the UI element. This refers to the submit button on the screen. And then this is where we are mentioning the web browser instance and default timeout. Okay, tell what time it has to wait before the action fails and all that. The output of this, the table will be stored into output data variable. Okay, yeah. Then save great so coming to the next task that we have which is writing the data back to an excel let me come back to this particular folder and create an excel for now we are doing it manually but going on the bot will create it for us so we'll also have two columns created for us one would be title and the next one would be author great so i'll just close this and go back to the power automate and here if i just go back to the actions and expand this excel here we will find there are few actions available to us which would be very helpful for the task that we are currently performing first one whenever you are trying to work with excel is launch excel so what i'll do is open the following document because we want to open a document that is already existing if you want to just open a blank one you could have done this but i just want to open an existing one let me go back to the folder where i had my file just click shift and right click on the mouse copy this and paste it just remove the double quotes from here and yeah that's all okay you can just go ahead and this is also having a variable called excel instance as you can see and just save it so now we have the excel instance so what we have to do now we have to write back some data to it right so this is what we will take from here i'm just dragging it and nothing it's all drag and drop okay what we have to write we have to write this data that we have called output data from this flow which has got 20 rows for now and tomorrow it might change if the website changes so you can just click on this icon here and you can select the variable the data table that we have and just click on select from 
where exactly are we trying to write back the data? As you remember, the first row of it contains columns. So we have to go ahead and ask the bot to paste the data from this cell. So this would be the first column and second row. Let me go back to this and it would be one and it would be two. Then save it. The final thing, just drag, close Excel and save document because we don't want to waste the efforts that we have put in. We want to save it. So just select save document and then save. Then guys, we are done. We are almost done. We just have to verify it by running it once. Don't worry about the naming conventions and all that. This project is just to get you familiar with the Microsoft Power Automate desktop web recorder. So if you are good with this, you are far away from people who are wasting their time doing some routine works which can be automated by using RPA tools. Fine, let me close the Excel here and also if any instances of Chrome. So I'm just closing this also. Okay, I'll just go ahead and run this particular flow. As you can see, it has launched openlibrary.org and it is also entering the keyword and clicked on search and the results came up and it wrote back the data to Excel. Let's go back and verify it once. If you see it is done, status is ready. So it's done. Let me go back to the Excel. Here I can see it wrote the title back and the author also. So that was about a simple RPA project that you can perform right away. I would definitely ask you to go ahead and try it out guys. It's really interesting. I have been working on RPA since almost six years and there are hundreds of projects that I have automated and enterprises are really eagerly waiting for RPA developers who are very skilled at what they do. So please go ahead and try to implement this project on your laptop. Welcome. So now we will go ahead and implement a new process called employee ID and email generation process. And this is how the process flowchart will look like. Here we have to collect the information from the user and then we have to launch the website called HR onboarding form and then enter the data whatever we have received from the user and then we have to display the employee ID and the email which was generated by the website. I'll just show you how this particular HR onboarding process form will look like. So this is how this particular portal will look like where you have to input few fields like first name, last name, date of birth, designation, mobile number, gender and then you have to check this particular checkbox here which actually takes an acceptance from you and then click on submit. So as soon as we do that, the employee ID and official email ID will be generated by this particular portal. This things we have to display it on the screen for the user. That's the task that we have to do right now. So these are the steps that will be actually performing. And then moving ahead, you might be interested in knowing what are the different things that you might learn after the completion of this particular process. You would be very good at web automation. Whenever you were given a task, you'll be able to do it seamlessly. If you are well equipped, you'll be able to handle any web automation if you are able to understand this particular process implementation. 
then you will be able to get a good idea of what are variables how to create them and all that and also you will have a good understanding of what are ui elements and how to fine tune them as per our need and then comes collect user inputs so whenever you are working on a process where you have to receive some information from the user you would be able to easily do it because you'll get yourself familiar with that particular action in this particular process moving back to our power automate desktop i'll go ahead and try to create a new flow by the name project 2 and then the name of this would be employee id and email generation process great so i'll just click on create or you can just type enter so this would actually give us a workspace to work on right so this is how it will look like a blank screen whenever you start creating a new process for you or your company then as we know the first requirement that we have at hand is to accept input from the user for that right we should be aware of what are the inputs that we have to ask him for this is the website and as you can see we might need first name last name date of birth and all this fields from him Let's go ahead and try to ask for first name. This could be done by using some actions available to us in this particular actions panel. I'll just type input. And as you can see, it says display input dialog. If you're not familiar with what this particular action is capable of, you just hover your mouse right here and then you would be able to see the screen here it says displays a dialog box that prompts the user to enter text so this is what is our requirement too so i'll just drag it to here and then it says input dialog box title it can be anything okay it can be maybe first name and what would be the message so message is something that we will look for right in anything maybe if there is some pop-up coming up you want to have a look at the message in the prompt and act accordingly so here we will just have what's the first name so as soon as the user actually sees it he'll try to input something which is related to first name so after that here are some of the variables being produced from this particular action as i have already mentioned variables are nothing but containers which will hold some data in it which could be of help in our implementation and our process so this particular activity or the action produces two variables one is user input which is nothing but this holds the input that has come from the user so let me change it to first name because that's what it will be holding right and then comes pressed button so this is nothing but i'll just show you okay let it be the default name itself i'll just save it so as soon as this is done i'll try to go ahead and run it once let's see how this display input dialog works so this is the title first name and this is the text that we had in the input dialog box this is what's the first name it would be sharad and then okay as you can see these are the flow variables that we are already aware of first name which was simply a box or a container that was supposed to hold some value is holding Sharat right now because this was executed and this was the variable that we have told it should hold this particular first name so it is having this value and button pressed if i go right here and see there was an another variable being produced out of this action which is 
button pressed because I have clicked on OK while giving this name it is OK right now if I just go ahead and again run it and this time if I instead of clicking on OK I click on cancel this would be empty because I didn't provide my first name itself and clicked on cancel this button pressed would be helpful to you when you want to handle or you want to implement a complex process where based on my choice of clicking on OK or cancel you want to maybe if I click on cancel you want to send out an email to person X saying this person is not interested in giving his details or if I just click on OK you can just proceed to the next steps that is the only use for this particular variable called button pressed you can even rename them if you want similar to however we have done this particular variable too great so right now as you can see we have five more such fields which we have to fill so we'll go ahead and take those inputs too let me drag another one and give last name here and then what's the last name and then I'll not change this button pressed I'll just go ahead and change these things because these are a few things that we'll be using and and this I'll not be using it anywhere okay and another thing that you might be interested in exploring is input type I've just selected the default one because I don't have a multi lines of text. If it would be multi lines of text, you can go ahead and select this. If it's a password, you don't want it to be displayed on the screen, then you can select this. But for us, it's single line should be more than enough. Okay, yeah. So let me go ahead and take what was the next one? It was date of birth and designation and mobile number. EOB what's your DOB and this would be DOB similar to this this would be designation And then the variable would be designation, also drag this and this would be mobile now, what's the mobile number and then this would be mobile. and the next one would be the gender it can be male or it can be female right so we'll just say gender what's the gender and then save okay i haven't changed the variable produced we go here and change it to gender Great. So we are done with the input part of the process where we'll be actually asking the user for some input. And now let's go ahead and launch the website so that we can start the data entry part of it. I'll just click here and select launch. So these are few options that are given to us so that we can work with whatever browser we are interested in. I can go ahead with Microsoft Edge, Chrome or Firefox. Let me go ahead with Chrome. So here I'll just select launch new instance because I don't want to use an existing instance of Chrome. And let's give the initial URL, copy this, paste it right here and the Windows state would be maximized. And this produces a variable called browser, which actually 
stores the instance session in it. If there are 10 browser instances open, I just want to close one instance out of it. This would be able to help me out with that particular requirement. So let me save it. The next thing that we would be interested in is populating the fields on the screen, right? So under browser automation, web form filling, you have populate text field. Just go right here. As you can see it by default, it has selected the browser instance coming out of launch new Chrome. And once that is done, we'll go ahead and select the add UI element. So what exactly is add UI element? Let me explain it to you. Once we are back to the portal, as you can see, as a human, I'm able to look at what these fields are. Like this is the first name, this is the last name, date of birth, designation. The reason why I'm able to differentiate between this and this is because I'm educated. And plus I have a good vision. If it was blurred out, would I be able to say it? No. In the same way, the robot that we are implementing or any other software that we can use to input the data on the screen, it would require a rule-based pattern. So that is how it will be able to input into this specific field when I say, please populate the first name. So how would it identify it? If I just go right here, place my cursor here, and click right click on the mouse and click inspect you would be able to see this particular point right here indicates this particular element on the screen so bot uses the structure available here to navigate from this header to this particular element through all this path it will go to header and then main and then article in a similar way it will find its way till this particular point so that it knows okay this is first name so here is where i have to enter the data given to me the same way for last name it will go here it will just go till this path and then enter the value there it will be same for this particular radio button also as you can see male as you can see female so based on this the bot identifies these elements on the screen and start automating them. This is something that you should be familiar with. If you are very new to programming, I would suggest at least spending 15 to 20 minutes on learning what is HTML and what is CSS and all these things. Basic knowledge about website structure. And then moving ahead, I'll just close this. Now we will go ahead and try to spy that particular element on the screen. I'll just click on add UI element. So now this pop-up might come up and then we have to directly go to this as it gets highlighted. I'll just click or press control key on the keyboard and left key on the mouse. So it should be able to capture the first name element. This is how it will look like. And then because we have to pass some value into it, I'll just go to select variables here and then select the first name. That's it. Just ignore this for now. And then here to the right side, right top, you'll find variables and then UI elements. Directly go to this particular place and double click on this. As you can see, it says, the selector that this particular action will be using is input open square brackets close square brackets in between id is equal to first name so this is what we have seen while we were inspecting the web page right and then you can just see if it's working just click on test selector and test it you have to also specify which one you'll be using let me go ahead with this and okay this will try to verify it and if i just go back to the page 
it should highlight this one let me show you test again as you can see it is highlighting this particular element on the screen save it in the similar way you also have to pass the other values similar to how we have passed this 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 okay i think this wasn't added here sorry for that select this and then save okay fine let's go ahead and add it for the other elements too so we are here it's taking the browser instance as browser and then your element would be a new element because first name we have already used and we don't want it right now i'll go ahead and add in another ui element come right here press on control key on keyboard and left click on mouse so i'll try to capture this element and then this should be that particular element and then we'll pass the last name and then save it in the similar way you can start capturing the other elements also if you want it to be more specific or more descriptive you can go ahead and rename this selector to first name and the second one to last name yeah that was it so you can just go ahead and try to input all this values right here that we had first name is done last name is done date of birth designation mobile are the pending things for now and for gender it would be a little different let's go ahead and do it for date of birth now add ui element control key on the keyboard and left click on the mouse it should capture that element and then we'll just pass on the date of birth and save let me do it for the other things also quickly this would be add element designation and it would be designation save the final one this would be again add element and mobile number as you can see this is what you have to do control and left click to choose a particular element on the screen here it would be what was that i think mobile right yeah select and save so we have them for all till mobile but if i just go back to this I'll find that here gender is a radio button which is quite different from what we have done till this point let me go ahead and see what are the options that are available for us if I just go right here and type radio I'll be able to see few other options available to us which is radio button let me drag it to this point and if I just go ahead and again spy the UI element, I just point it out to this control key on keyboard and left key on mouse. It should give me a selector because I have pointed out mail, it should actually select mail, right? But the problem here is tomorrow someone might be a female. Even for them, it will end up choosing me. So here's the problem, right? If I just go ahead and click here and edit it, I'll find it has selected male here. But will it also work for female? No, right? So a simple way to handle this would be just save it and take an if condition just type there if and drag this thing and here it says first operand so we want to compare one particular value with another value 
So if the first operand, what we would pass is gender and select if gender is equal to male. If gender is equal to male, then perform this action. If not, then just again click if here and else if if gender is equal to female then we have to select another radio button right again let me go ahead here and click radio and drag this radio button here and point out ty element this would be the UI element now. So I'll just click on save. Just verify if it was correctly captured. Go to this. And it should be female. Yeah, you can give a proper naming convention if you want. For now, I'm just leaving it. So this is done. So the next part would be accepting the terms and clicking on submit. For that, I'll just go ahead and because accepting the terms is a checkbox, I'll just mm -hmm. click on check and I'll drag this and then specify the UI element. Just take it to the right and then control key on the keyboard and left click on the mouse. And then I want it to be checked, so I'm not selecting this rather than selecting this and save. If I just go ahead, okay, this is something that I've faced earlier, so I'm sure that this will fail. The reason behind, as you can see, it is navigating from this to this to this and this. But whenever you find such a complex selector, you are recommended to change it and make it a much simpler version. So what you can do is you can just unselect all these things from this elements and just try it out with the basic one, the first one that is available here. If it's working, then fine, just save it. If it's not, just try to go from the bottom to the top. Let me go ahead and test the selector once to see if it's working. I'll select this instance and click on OK. Great, it is able to highlight it. So it should work the next time we run it. So now I'll again have to click on this submit button. So I have to just search for and this would be something that I might end up using. Click link on web page action and I'll just specify that element here. It would be submit. And I would like to have a left click. Please go ahead and verify the selector for this also. I've just tried to double click on this selector and just remove whatever you feel is making this selector complex one and then test it once again. If it's not working, then try to modify it a bit. Yeah, it's working for us. Great. So this is done for us. Let's see if it's working till this point. I'm going ahead and I'm clicking on run. The first thing that we have to enter is the first name and then the last name and then the date of birth. And then a designation, senior. And then mobile number or some random number for now. And this would be mail save so this would launch the website and it will start entering the details right here designation mobile number gender accepting the terms and clicking on submit so as soon as this does that particular action you can see the employee id and official email id were generated so the next task that we have is to extract those values and display it on the screen. Congratulations guys, you have actually come 
a long way and learning how to use RPA tools to automate your tasks. Let me go back to this and the way we would be able to extract any value from the screen from a web is by using extract actions that we have. One would be get details from element. As soon as I just drag get details of element on web page, this particular action with this icon will be able to see web browser instance, which is browser for us, which is good. And then we will try to spy that particular element on the screen. Same way again, control key on the keyboard and left click on the mouse. And it would be able to capture that element. Great. So we are going to get the attribute, which is own text. You can also click. You can also get the other ones also if this is a particular attribute which is disabled or if it exists if you want to get the title but most of the times it would be own text so just select own text here and this would generate a variable which is attribute value we'll just change it to employee id and i'll just click on save as you can see it would be generated here where's the employee id yeah so the next time we run it, this will be populated. So I'll do the same for the email ID also. I'll just go ahead, add UI element. I'll try to fetch this. Control left key. And I'll just change it to employee email. Save. So by now we assume that we are able to fetch the employee ID and the email. So the last agenda that we have for us right now is displaying them on the screen using a display. So here, this is the activity. Whenever, whenever you're working with any RPA tool, right now as we are working with Power Automate, it provides you a display message with could be used which could be used for any purpose like displaying output or just stopping the bot and having a look at what data it has fetched till that point you can start using display message the title of this would be result and message to display if you don't understand what exactly is this just hover here it will just specify a descriptive uh, meaning of this particular field here so that you can input a correct parameter to it. It says, what should I display? You go right here, select employee ID, and then let me introduce a new line here. And then I've just clicked on enter, okay, to get from here to here, and just have another variable, which is employee email. That's it, guys. So don't change anything here just click on save so right now this whole flow is almost done you just have to change this values if you want because in real time you have to have a good proper naming conventions if you want you can just keep it as just go here and rename it as button pressed first name last name like that okay you can just change it to first name and click on enter so this would change this button pressed first name and similar to that you can go ahead and do it and for ui elements also as i've done it for first name last name you can go ahead and rename it to date of birth and similar to this you can just rename it to submit extract employee id and all these things this would be more of a professional development this we'll be doing soon in all our projects as we go or as we proceed further. Okay. So for now, let me close all other instances of this particular portal so that we can have a clear view on what exactly is happening. I'm just running it once again. So let me enter the first name. It would be Sharad. Last name. This time. A lot of use and then the date of birth 
some designation and then a mobile number and then a gender this time let's go ahead and use female to test our development great so this time it is launching a website and it should enter the first name last name and all other fields and date of birth designation mobile number female and then accept the terms and submit it this time as you can see it has generated employee id and email id this is the message box that we have used to display the results on the screen that's all guys so we are done with the development if i go back to the code this is what we have implemented to execute the task or to automate the employee id and email generation process for hr this simple process that i've tried to demonstrate without using recorder because you'll be using mostly this kind of approach to any complex automation that you'll be doing at your office recorders are rarely used those are only used for simple projects so get accustomed to this kind of implementation so you will find it very interesting because you have a lot of control when you do this kind of implementations great hope you have enjoyed it the process that we will be automating today is rpa challenge this is the flow chart for that and let's start with the requirement of this the first step is downloading the input file from the website called rpachallenge.com the second step is reading the input file which is an excel for us and the third step is data entry sorry i think there is a typo here it's data entry and then submitting it that's it and i'll just show you how the site will look like this is how the site rpa challenge looks like here we have to download the excel file from this particular option as soon as we download it we would be able to look at the input of that particular challenge so here are few of this fields available to us called first name last name company name role in the company address email and phone number all these values one by one we have to enter them into this fields right here under the corresponding label first name will go right here like this and then the last name here and we have to submit it and then in the same way the second row item from this will go into this particular fields and then submit 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 so as you can see the fields that are available on the screen are changing the positions so that's where the name rpa challenge comes up so this is the situation which is given to us and let's see how we can handle it once everything is done as we keep submitting these things after 10 iterations they should give us a score let's go ahead and see how we can implement it first thing that i'll try to do is i'll start creating a workspace for us here new flow and then project 3 and then rp challenge great so we'll go ahead and save this great guys so we have the workspace for us ready and what was the requirement that we had at hand we have to launch this website and then click on this download excel and then click on start so that we can get started with our challenge and start entering the values so let's go ahead and launch this website first i'll just copy this url control c and then coming back to a flow i'll search for launch and i'll just drag this thing right here and as we know we'll go ahead with launch a new instance and just paste the url that we have with us and we want it to be maximized that's it and if i go ahead right here and run this particular flow it should launch a new instance for us 
great we have this ready for us the next step would be downloading the excel from this particular link we have an activity called click so this is what we will use click under browser automation i'll just drag this and this is the instance on which we have to work and let me spy the element on which we have to click i'll just go ahead and use add ui element as we have done earlier so this pop-up comes up and i have to just point out this particular element on the screen control key on the keyboard and left key on the mouse so this is the particular element on which we have to click i'll just click on save now i'll just go ahead and look for that particular file which is already downloaded for that what would be the thing that we have to do right now we have to read the file from downloads folder so once this particular thing is done we have to wait for that particular file to be generated this is how our file will look like in the downloads folder so first thing that we have to do is before reading this particular file that is downloaded we have to wait for this file to be downloaded first right for that what i'll try to do is i'll just click on shift and right click on the mouse and i'll copy the path of it and let's go back to our power automate desktop here if i just click on file i have few activities or few actions available to us the one that we can use is wait for file i'll just drag this so what it will try to do is as you can see suspend running the flow until a file is created or deleted for us it's creation right so it will wait for that particular element to be downloaded so let it be created and i'll just paste the file that we have and i'll just click on save so how much time would you want to allow the bot to wait for let it to be maybe 60 or 30 seconds okay this is in seconds if you're not aware of the units that you have to give here you can just hover here and say time duration in seconds so let's save this so this particular thing will wait for 30 seconds and throw an error if that particular file is not downloaded are available to the bot once this is done the fourth step that we have to do is we have to launch the excel as usually i'll just launch the excel file here it will be an existing file and the path for this would be the one that we have already copied this just remove the double quotes and for us this would be just a read only file right i'll just mark it as read only if you don't want it to be read only you just leave it okay earlier we have used this option as default where we make the excel visible while performing some actions on it this time let's go ahead and try to disable this the only thing that we can expect by disabling this is that the excel won't be available on the screen it will be processed in the back end i'll just save it so these are few steps that you are already aware of right and the next step would be as soon as you launch it you have to read the data available in the excel for that just type read and this option here let's go ahead and select all available values from worksheet so it will just select all the values available in the excel and then go ahead and in the advanced options select this particular option available right here first line of range contains column names and this data will be saved into excel data the reason why i've selected this option is because for us the first row contains the columns of it and then go ahead and save it so this is also done 
for now our values the data from that excel will be saved into the variable called excel data which is a data table containing rows and columns great so we are done with the launching of website downloading the file and reading it the next one would be to start the challenge let's go ahead and click on start again the same option of click link on web page instance is same and this time we'll go ahead and add ui element we'll just drag it to the right and control key on the keyboard and left click on the mouse so this should actually select a capture that start button if you want to modify the selector you have to go to this particular option right here ui elements and then from here you can edit it because this seems to be good for now for me i'll just leave it else you can also take off the other unstable things from here if you feel just this button should be enough for it to select that particular element on the screen let me test it and as we can see it is able to highlight it fine i'll just save it great so now as soon as we do this the challenge will start right okay let me test it if it's work because we have come a long way till this point let's go ahead and run this particular file to keep our environment clear you can delete the already downloaded file in your downloads folder i'll just close the existing instance of it going forward they will make the bot close this instance so i'll launch the flow so as you can see it has launched the website and also downloaded the file read it and clicked on start that's why you're able to see round one here great so we were able to achieve whatever we, we have planned to execute going back to the code as you can see this excel data has thousand rows is it true but we have seen that we only have 10 values in it but this seems to be having a lot of empty columns and empty rows one way to handle the situation is manually delete this particular empty rows and that would not be a real-time solution to the process that we are trying to automate so we'll handle it in a different way so i'll just close it we'll go ahead and start looping through those particular items in the excel for that we might need a for each loop great so we'll just take this and drag it here the data for this would be our excel data this is done and i'll just save it once this is done now the task for us is to enter this data into rpa challenge website so what i'll do is i'll make use of an activity or an action available in power automate called populate text field i'll just drag inside this for each so now the first element that i have to spy would be first name control key on the keyboard and left click on the mouse so it might have captured the value here i want to pass on the first name right so i'll just go click on this icon variables icon and then select current item the reason why i'm selecting current item is because our data from the excel data which is a data table containing all the rows it passes on each value or each row to current item as it iterates over the for each so first time it iterates over we will have the value of first row in this particular variable that we have as i want to use a 
the first column, I'll take 0. First column is referred by 0 index. Second column will be referred by 1 index. Okay. If you don't want to go by column indexes, you can also end up using the name of that particular column like this. Okay. And you can just save it. But for now, for simplicity, I'm just going ahead and I'm using column indexes. Let's save it. Okay. For now, we are good. So let me go ahead and try to launch it again. And let's see if it's able to populate this value on the screen or on the website. I'll just close the previous instances and launch this again. As you can see, it has launched the file and has clicked on start. And this is the round one. But looks like there is some issue with our code. Let's go back to our file. And as you can see, it says form field with selector this is not found. What would be the issue? Going back to a selector for this particular thing. Whenever you find an error message with the description not found, this is related to the selector. Okay, that should be our first understanding. Let's go back to this and have a look at input field THJN4. This is what it is, right? Yeah, I'll just go ahead here and I'll just click on edit. As you can see, there is some random number here which might have not come when we relaunched the website. Because if I just click on test selector and click on test and if tab and click on OK, it says failed. There is in this particular symbol here, which says test of this has failed. No element exists. Why did that happen? The reason why it has failed is because the site that we are currently working with is creating random selectors every time. So now a task would be to find a stable selector which stays consistent throughout our automation. For that, when the first option of generating a selector would be Power Automate and if it is unable to or if it is not capable of creating a unique selector for us, we have to do it manually. I'll just go ahead and point out this particular field that we want to automate and then right click on the mouse and select inspect. It will soon take me to this particular window. Okay, here we would be able to get the stable selector. As you can see, it is label first name and the ID of this is this. For us, last time we got some other ID as you can see. THJN4 and now it is FGJYO. So that's where our bot is failing because this ID is unique every time we launch the RPA challenge website and we are trying to depend on that particular property of first field. So let's not depend on this further. And I think this should be this table selector for this ENG reflect name, label first name. Just to confirm it, click on submit and again, try to get the selector for this by the same method. As you can see, this time the ID has changed, but still ng reflect name, this attribute, it's the same. So let's go ahead and copy this and go back to our code. Here, just click on this text editor and remove the ID property and just paste the one that we have just confirmed this and test it before saving it every time make sure that you test it great it is able to highlight that particular selector re element save it 
great i i hope this should work fine so let's go ahead and do the same for the other fields also you can again search for populate and drag this to the workspace and indicate the element yeah here we have this particular thing i'll just capture this thing again last name and i'll pass current item select and i have to select second column of that particular data so i'll just click on save and again i'll just go here and edit this and this time also i don't have a stable selector let me go back to this and i'll just inspect it and i'll just copy the last name this time go to text editor remove this save okay if you want uh, to be sure that this belongs to the first name make sure that you rename those elements here this would be first name this would be last name and similar to this make sure that you do it for all the buttons so because we already have these things let's not waste time by creating everything again okay i'll just select this copy it and then control v it will paste the element right here then i'll just buy a new element and in our excel the next one is company name so I'll just buy this and this time let's not go ahead with column index let's try to give a proper column name for us it's company name so just copy this control C and then here remove one and single quotation paste it single quotation and then save it so again here you have to change it because this is something which is not stable company name this time it's company name text editor paste it yeah done this is also done for us and then again control c uh, can copy this particular thing and then control v paste it how many fields are there we are left with four more so i'll just copy this paste again paste again paste again so we have in total seven right so let's start editing from this particular thing add group and this time what it is role in company is this field just scroll it yeah and this would be role in company right open your excel role in company so the reason why i'm just not typing it uh, rather i'm just copying it the reason is as you can see in last name there is an extra space if you just type it you might make some mistake there you will not copy this extra space also because this is needed for the bot to execute that particular column so that's why make a habit of copying the exact text rather than typing it we'll have to paste that value here and click on save
this didn't work yeah there should be a single quotation then save it and you have to do it for all of this particular elements so this would be the company right company name so this would be the role in company so again this is a tedious process i know but you should be very careful while doing it so i'm just trying to show you all these steps so that you will get familiar with how this automation works so again you have to copy this field go back here and paste it and save it so we are done with a role in company also in a similar way i'll be doing it for all of this particular remaining elements too so that's it guys so i've done it for all of this particular fields available on the website and also i have renamed them i definitely recommend you to follow the standards okay whenever you spy some selector please go ahead and rename it so that it would be very readable and then this is done so let's go ahead and test it once to see if actually it enters that particular data so once this fields are being populated you have to submit it to go to the next page for that let's also introduce a click to do that particular submit i'll just have a click here add ui element and i'll just select this control key on the keyboard and left click on the mouse i'll just save it and also check if this particular selector is stable as you can see there is a lot of unnecessary structure here i'll just remove them it this should work okay if you just click on this and test it right it should work okay it is able to highlight it save it cool so let's go ahead and try to run it once to see if it's actually working i'll just close all the open excel and then also close the existing instance of chrome and we'll run it once so it has launched the excel downloaded the file and it has read the excel file and will start entering the data this is the first round that we are in right now great guys as you can see it is able to enter this data and handle the dynamic nature of this site see the first name goes into the first name and the last name goes into the last name so i think it should work and the next thing that we can discuss about is as we had thousand rows coming up in our data table but while in our input we only had 10 how to handle it one way is to actually do some manipulations and find out after which row we have the empty rows but that would be a little complex at this point of stage so let's go ahead and try to handle it with simple if else's so the approach that we will take right here is we'll try to see if there's any data in that particular row if it's not we will come out of this for each that we have okay that would be a simple solution for now so once this is done we'll try to implement that approach great guys we are in round eight and and this should be done soon and it says congratulations your success rate is 100 because we have entered all those values and if i just go back again 
my this particular flow should fail the reason being it is unable to find the first name again because it's in the 11th uh, i'll just show you what exactly has happened so it has completed till this point and the site shows it's completed and it is now because it is in the for each it is in this particular row and it is trying to enter an empty value on the screen okay and it is searching for first name field on the screen which is not visible that's what we have to handle now i'll just close it and also ignore this error for now and take an if condition here is the if and here we have to pass the first operand what would be the first operand for us just come here and then open this copy this just copy this and then go back to your if else i've just double clicked on this particular action and then paste it so what we want to try or achieve here is if the first column of the current row which is the 11th row right for us it has failed at 11th row but for now let's assume the loop is going through the first row and here we want to compare if the first column of first row which is this value is empty okay is this empty it's not so it will go ahead and try to enter the values into the screen so if this is not empty then perform whatever action that comes under this if so this should happen this should happen this 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 and this all this should happen if that row has some non empty values and then if it reaches till this point and when it tries to enter this values also we want to come out of this for each i'll just drag an else if and here we will use the same operand which is this and if it's empty right that is what we are trying to handle if it's empty then my bot should come out of this for each that is being executed which is i'll just show you this for each right it will try to go through each row and enter these particular values to the screen so that we want to stop if this is empty then what we have to do we have to come out of this particular loop for that we have stop flow action and stop flow just drag this here and end flow successfully we don't want to throw any error save it great guys so this is what will happen now so this is the final flow let's go ahead and run it once and run this flow again it will launch the rpa challenge and it should download the excel file and then start the data entry just fast forward this particular data entry because we have already seen how it works and this time as you can see it is completed with 100% success rate and if i go back to my code it says status ready which says it is completed right the reason being last time it has failed is it was trying to go through empty cells also and expecting the screen 
elements to be there for it to enter the value right and it should have an empty values for sure as you can see though there were 999 rows in our excel data it has come out of loop as soon as the data in particular row which is 11th row for us was empty so this is how you would be able to handle any data issues in your excel by using if else's or by writing any complex code so that was it guys we have launched the excel clicked on download and waited for that particular excel to be downloaded and launched the excel read the data and done our data entry go to this particular populate text field on web page and try to use the advanced options and play around with this and see if you will be able to reduce the time that it takes to enter the data on the screen or the website let's meet in the next lecture now we'll be automating a process known as sales report generation process here this is how the flow looks like the human and the bot here the human will just provide us an input excel file to the bot and from there the bot will start reading the excel file which is an input to it and based on the data in the excel input file we will try to create sales reports in word format using an existing template that we have and then convert them to pdf files using a windows application that is there with us and then move the specific converted files to a particular folder this is the process that we have to automate now and now using the data available in the excel which is an input file to us we will try to create sales reports in word format using an existing template and then whatever word files we have with us we will try to convert them to pdf format using a windows application that we have with us and finally move this converted files to a specific folder this is the process that we will try to automate now here are the files our folder structure that we should be aware of this is the input file here you have four employees and their divisions sales how much sales they made and their name using this input file we have to create word files like this as we can see david division will be north and sales is this once this particular word files are created by using a master template that we have like this we'll go ahead and use this particular windows application to convert word files to pdf files these are the pdf files this looks similar to word files but these are in pdf so here you have to just click on this to select the word file that you have and then click on open and then pass the folder where you want to save it and then just click on convert so it will just complete it the purpose of this particular process is to make you comfortable with working with word files pdf files and windows applications and also give some familiarity regarding file management let's go ahead and start the implementation now we will go ahead and try to create our fourth project which is sales report generation process great let's create it a moment i click on create we should have a blank workspace as we usually have and then as we have already seen the first thing that we have to do is we have to read the input that we have with us this is the step that we'll be implementing right now so i'll just go ahead and search for launch and it would be launch excel and then we have to go ahead and use an existing file all this files right here will be given to you so that you can start implementing this process all by yourself just click on shift and right click on mouse and you'll be able to find 
the path of this. It might be a little different on your system. So do it accordingly. Then paste it here, then remove and make instance visible, let it be, and open as read it, let it be. Let me save this. So this is done. And once we are actually able to launch the Excel application, then we have to read the file. So that's what I'll do here. I'll just search for read. I have read from Excel. And here, this is the instance, right? That is coming out of launch Excel. So that should be there. And then I'll just ask it to read everything in the worksheet. So once this is done, the output of this will be saved into Excel data. If you want, you can rename it to anything that you want and then click on save. So this is also there. And then I have to close the Excel. I'll search for close. And then I'll search for Excel. This is the Excel. I'll just drag it. This is the instance. I don't want to save it. I'll just click on save done. So what this will do is it will read out that particular Excel and store it in a data table. Let's quickly run it and see if we are able to fetch the information. Great. So we have some data coming into it. Let's go back to here and specify some advanced options that we have, which is first line of range contains column names. So this will tell this particular option here tells Microsoft Power Automate to consider the first row as columns. So let me save it. Great guys. So we are done with the first step that we have to execute to perform. And then the next one is create sales report files in word format using an existing template. And now we'll be dealing with creating those sales reports using a template. So let me go ahead and use a for each because we have to iterate through all those rows available in Excel. We have to first create a sales report in word format for this, for this, for this, for this. It tells that we have to iterate through all of these things one by one. So going right here, I'll just select for each because for each allows us to loop through something. So that's what I have taken and here I have to pass our data, which is Excel data. Go just select this variable from here. This is done and each one of this will be available to us during execution in current item variable. You can also always change this to whatever you want. You can just rename it to input row if you want or leave it as it is. I'm just changing it so that you understand how to change it in the future. Just save it. So this thing we have. And now the requirement is we have to use this master template which is available here and create four templates like this. What would be your logic to do that? Okay. In this case, what we will try to do is we'll take a copy of this into this folder first. Let me show you manually. I'll just copy this and paste it here and then try to rename it to whatever name which is available in the sheet. For now, it's Sharad here. So I'll just rename it to Sharad. But as there is already file name for this, I'll just delete the existing files. Yeah. So next, we'll just rename it to Sharad. And then what we will try to do is we'll try to replace this placeholders with whatever data we have in the Excel sheet. So first one was Sharad, then comes East. I'll just copy it. This would be East. And then this would be the sales. 
great and then i'll just save it if i just close it and come back here it is this is what i was able to do manually and this is what we will try to do it through bot okay let me delete this so the first thing that we have planned to do is create a copy of this inside the folder files wherever you might have this particular folder on your desktop or whatever we are not bothered about it what you have to do right now is copy this to word files folder so i'm right here we'll just search for an action called copy file let's drag it right here and see what are the parameters it is expecting from us first thing says file to copy which file to copy okay this would be simply select file and then you have to navigate to wherever this is there for me this is the folder and this is the master template i'll just open this is the one great then where do we exactly want it to pass and then the destination folder where we want to create a copy of it you can just select this folder structure here you can actually start selecting the folder for me it's in videos and then the recorder for me and then here i have this many files inside this i have this folder and here it is word files for me this is one way of telling it this is one way of providing the destination folder or uh, if you don't want it to be like that you can directly go to the folder where you have your folder and then shift and right click and then just copy as path and you can just paste it this is one way of doing it and then if file exists override it okay great i'll just click on save so this is how it will be able to create a copy of that master template in my word files folder now what what did we do earlier once we copy it we have tried to rename it right so that's what we will do i'll just search for rename here it is rename file i'll just copy it here and then i'll have to give the file name to rename the file name would be just save it and then you can get this particular information from here just go here copy this whole thing you can just go back to the folder where you have that word files and then if this master template is copied right here assuming that we'll try to take the path of this and then you have to just paste it so here i haven't done anything i'm just passing the file for which it, the name should be renamed this is nothing but as you can see we are taking word files and inside that we know that after copying or after taking a copy of master template the name would be the same which is under word files right so this is the file for which we have to rename the name and then set a new name and then what would be the new name here we'll just copy this We'll just copy it and paste it and then you don't want every person's name to be master template because they will be replaced every time as we have selected that option so what we will try to do is we'll just go ahead and go to this select variables and we know that every row data is available in input row variable right this is what we have from here if you see input row so this is what has all the data that is there from the input file so you'll just go click your click your cursor here and then select input row and then select so this has 
the complete row but we want to have only the name out of it so that we can have the name in the word file right so what i'll try to do is i'll just copy this and then open bracket close bracket and then single quote single quote and in between i'll just give this so this is nothing but the name out of that particular excel let me create an hyphen here yeah great so once that is done we'll overwrite if there is any other file there with the same name and then save so what this will do is once we have taken a copy of master template we are able to now rename it to that particular person for whom we want to create a report this is also done and then the main task where we have to replace this particular fields with whatever data we have in the excel right so that is what we will do now to perform this action in microsoft power automate we don't have any dedicated actions as you can see in the software here you don't have anything related to word in specific though you have it for pdf excel emails database but you you can't find anything related to word so you uh, so you have many other options available to you which can be utilized to achieve this replacement task but for now i can go ahead and try to use the scripting okay for now i have preferred to use powershell script to replace that task don't be scared with this particular code you can get it anywhere okay you can just google it saying i want to replace something on the board and you will find similar to this some code you can just pick it up and change it accordingly and you can use it i myself have taken it from google and i have made few changes to it like this and then this and then this okay so don't be scared about it you can also go ahead and use a python code to do this okay it completely depends on you it looks similar but there is a setup that has to be done an environment has to be created so i'm not going ahead with python i'm just trying to go ahead with powershell script okay this script it just takes which file we have to use and what are the different things that we have to replace and which file we have to save after doing all these changes we have to save the file right so that is what i'm doing right here as you can see this particular field here represents this field and then this represents with what value we want to change it and this is nothing but the row that we have along with column and this would be division column this would be sales column because they are in loop as we can see in the code this is in loop so it will go from each of those users available here one by one so i'll just go ahead and just try to take this scripting which is powershell script i'll just place it here and i just have to copy this particular data so before we actually start copying this particular program let's take care of few of the things available right here here you have to actually correct this particular thing according to your folder structure so before this particular word files you have to replace this with your file structure wherever it is maybe it's in d drive or c drive or whatever because this should actually remain the same at least as per our implementation for you too and also this value right here should match the value that you have right here input row if it's sharath for you right here then here also instead of this input row it would be sharath got it right so make sure this is matching with that for each loops variable and these are something which are already available in your word file because you will be working out with the files that i'll be giving to you so there should not be much of a change 
and here also just try to make the necessary changes to this particular thing okay fine just copying a tagline and i'll just paste it right here that's it guys so i can just go ahead and save this so there's no error that we can see we can go ahead and start running the program for us as we can see the program is able to read the data from excel and it is iterating through the for each which means that it is creating the word files for us let me go back to the folder once here we are and in this particular word files folder i can see the word files being generated let me open david once to see if it has the correct data as expected yeah david has the data for name division and sales let me go back and see it for sharat also yeah it's east and thousand dollars great so we are finally able to replace the text in the template and rename the files too so you should be by now very good with how to work with word files and also have some knowledge of folder and file management the next thing that we have at hand is where we will launch this particular application and then convert the files available in this folder to pdf which will appear something similar to this this is the final thing that we have right now which has to be implemented so for us to implement it the first thing that we have to do is launch this specific windows app for that what i can do is i can go ahead and search for application and then soon i'll find an action called run application just drag it after end and it will ask for a few parameters so that it can launch the application there are a few things called application path command line arguments folder path this all are not needed you just can go ahead by passing the application path you have to find out where you have this particular application because i'll be giving this whole documents that are available here you can download it and then once you unzip that particular folder just go right here click on shift key on keyboard and right click on mouse and then copy as path give the same thing right here just try to remove the double quotes and then save that's it guys so with this you would be able to launch the windows application that we want to launch and then we have to pass all the word files that we have in this folder to this particular application so that this can convert them to pdf files so for that the next thing that we need to implement is get all these files from this folder so that we can pass one after the other to this particular application so that it can convert this word files to pdf files for us great for that right you have to come back to your microsoft power automate tool and search for files if you are not aware of what would be the keyword then just type it whatever you are working with for now it's files for us so i just typed files and as i can see there is a action called get files in folder this is what we need so here it is expecting the folder and any filters if needed so for now i don't want to apply any filters because i know all these files are word files and there is no filter needed and we want to include any subfolders because i don't have any subfolders for now even this i will not touch it so i'll just try to pass the folder to it for us the folder would be this path i'll just copy it control c and i'll just paste it great so all this files available in this folder called word files which is available in its directory will be stored into files
so you can just save it so this is the variable that will actually hold all the paths of this particular files that are available here so it will be a list right so it will just hold the item similar to this it will just let me show you how it actually works try to take a new thing here so this will be like this and the path of this will be saved like this so similar to this you will have all the four available to you it's up to you that how you would be able to utilize this further so now because we know this file paths are available to us in files list i will go ahead and try to pass them through the windows app that we have so let me take f for each so that we can pass each path or file available to us in word files folder to the windows app i'll take this here and then i have to pass the files it would be files for me i'll just select this and select so every file path will be stored into current item as we iterate over this particular files list so you can do whatever you want by using this variable so what we have to do by using this variable right here we have to click on select word files option so that next we can give the file name let me go ahead and select this for clicking this we need a click activity we have to take this which is under ui automation rather than browser automation so i'll just drag this inside this for each and i'll try to go ahead and add ui element which is this control key on keyboard and left key on mouse so this is there and we are going to click on left click so let me save this great guys so this will actually click on this button like this so the next step that we have to perform is when we do it manually we select this path we navigate through this particular folders here but as a robot or when we are programmatically doing something you can directly type that particular path here and then click on open okay so this is what we will try to achieve even through this particular power automate desktop so now i'll try to take populate activity or action here it is i'll just drag it and then i'll just take add ui element and try to capture this control key on the keyboard and left click on the mouse great so this is there and as we know we want to type something over there what would be that particular data it is nothing but current item right which holds the path of the first file which is this maybe it might take based on date modified or whatever okay let's assuming that it will take based on date modified this would be the file so here we want to enter the file path which would be current item for us as current item represents the first element in this particular list we have save it so as we iterate through for each this will keep changing and it will be going through each of those particular files and this is how it would look like and then we have to click on open so let's go ahead again and select click i'll just drag it and then try to capture that element this is open great i'll just click on save assuming the bot has clicked on open also as we can see it has taken the file name which we want to convert and it is asking to provide the destination folder what is the destination folder for us it's nothing but 
this particular folder which is PDF files. I'll just copy this. If this folder doesn't exist, please create it. And then we want to paste it here. This is what we will try to do through pot. I'll just go ahead and search for populate. This is here. And here I'll just try to capture that. Here I'll just try to capture this. And great. So now what we have to pass here, we have to pass this hard coded value for now. This can be made dynamic and the same thing we will learn as we progress. So don't be confused about it. What is dynamic value? What is a static value or hard coded values and all that? I'll soon let you know if you are not aware of it. So you can just save it. So assuming it has typed that particular thing, it will click on convert. So let's go ahead and also take a click. Click UI element and I'll just add new element which is convert. Here we are, we'll just click on save. So it would have clicked on convert. And as soon as we do that, this pop-up comes up saying this is where the files will be saved. So we have to click on OK. For that again, I'll just drag in another UI element and spy this to click on OK. I'll just click on Save. So this should also be done. And then once we click on OK, it says completed. So this label right here indicates that the conversion was successful. Let me go back to the folder and see if it's happening. Oh, these files have been there already. So I'll just delete them. Okay, if assuming this is how it should work, there should be a file being generated. Okay, that we'll soon see when we try to run the whole complete implementation. Fine. So after this, what we have to do is because it is a for each and it will try to go to other file and try to convert it. We should keep a condition where it will wait for this completed to come up on the screen. Only then this for each item, the next item will be executed, right? We don't want to rush through this particular conversion. We have to wait for the first word files to be converted into PDF and then pick up the second one. For that, as we are planning to do, just type wait. This is what we want to do, right? We have to wait. Uh, we are planning to wait for this completion to happen. And as we can see, there are a lot of waits available. If you are waiting for an image, you can take this. If you are waiting for a window, you can take this and all these things. So let me go ahead and take wait for window content. What this expects is, it expects wait until what? Wait until you have UI element this on the screen. So here, you can go here and you can add the UI element that we are interested in. We are interested in this. So I just control key on the keyboard and left click on the mouse. This is there. So you can also keep a timeout if this is expected to come after a lot of time. Maybe you can just keep 30 seconds here. The max 30 seconds is what we are giving for the conversion time and then save it. That's it. So this should actually convert each one of them. And lastly, because we want to keep the environment clean after our automation, we can just use close window after this particular operation you can select by title and here this would be the title of this windows application this is what it is and then click on save as you can see it has come inside this just drag it outside because it shouldn't be inside for each else we have to launch the application repeatedly for all the five of this files available to us so we'll close it after all this conversion is done. So that's it guys. So this is what we have for now. 
we are assuming that it will start reading the input file and it will start replacing the text in the master word file and then pass on those particular word files to the windows application that we have and then close the application during this implementation you would get familiar with windows application automation and then how to handle word files automation different file and folder management operations and also excel let me go ahead and run the file once before doing that go back to your folder wherever you have this folder structure try to delete all of this yeah that's it just try to run this particular automation as you can see it has read the excel and it should be trying to create the word files for us we go back to here and see yeah it is doing it and soon after that it will try to convert them to pdf as expected it has launched the application and it is converting this word files to pdf in the background you can find it so it will do it four times for now but if you have given it thousands of files it will do the same thing really great right so this is how you'd be able to automate whatever task you have at hand which is being done manually for now and would be able to save a lot of time at your organization once this is done it has closed the application and that's it as you can see it is done that's it guys so hope you have implemented it so you'd be able to find all the supporting documents after your lecture are in the description so please go ahead and i would like to suggest you to please implement it by looking at the video and pause it wherever needed and please do have some practical implementation being done please implement it practically so that you remember it for a longer run thanks the process that we'll be working right now is invoice data extraction process and this is how the flowchart for it will look like the first step that we have to do is download invoices from email and then this emails will have some attachments in it we'll try to extract the data out of them and those files are pdf files and after that we will send emails to specific customers whose email ids are available in the pdf files that we have that's the process and the interesting part of this what are the different things that you'll be learning when you finish this implementation the first thing you will learn how to retrieve the emails using the rpa tool and also how to send out emails and then as you'll be working with invoices which are in pdf format you'll also learn how to extract the information from pdf files and for the extraction we will use a different technology called regular expressions you will learn how to handle few of them we'll try to take some uh, basic techniques and we'll try to fetch the information or extract the information from pdf files you'll also learn about regular expressions so this regular expressions will help you fetch some information that we want from the pdf files that we have and you will also learn exception handling which is a must skill whenever you're working with any programming language or any programmatical implementation now we are back to our microsoft power automate desktop and here we will start implementing the flow i'll just take project file and it would be invoice data extraction process and i'll just create it so this should create a workspace for us to work on it should take few more seconds maybe yeah it is there so the first thing that we have to do as per our requirement was to fetch some information 
are some data files are the invoices the first step that we have to do right now is to fetch the information from emails so what is the information we have to fetch invoices from the email so let's have a look at it this is how the mail might look like where you have a subject called invoices may month 2023 and you might get it from some user and then he might attach those invoices like this and you will have a plain body right here so let's have a look at this invoices this is how this invoices will look like it might have the company's name and the company's detail where it is and all that company's details like the name of it and the location of it and to whom this invoice has to be sent or uh, to whom this invoice belongs to the name of the person is miss santoshi and the residence is in mumbai and this is the email id and then this is the phone number and this is what they have purchased and the quantity unit price amount a regular kind of invoice template okay similar to this we have other invoices also as you can see this belongs to sharat raju and hyderabad email id phone number and he has purchased hp laptop and the details okay and the date of this and all this so in the similar way you might also have some invoices in which all the details are there but this email ids are missing okay these things we have to handle so let's go ahead and look at what we have to do so first step that we have to do is we have to download this attachments to a specific folder in your computer similar to this folder you can create one folder on your system and then try to save those attachments to this particular folder okay once this is done what we have to do is we have to implement the rpa project such that it will read all this invoices and send this attachment itself to this email id right here with the name at the start got it right so this is how it should look like so let's go ahead and see if we can implement it and also remember to handle this kind of invoices where there is no email id we have to send it to a specific person saying this invoices doesn't have a valid email in it or valid name in it so please take care of it so that they can manually process it this was all about the process and as you can see this is how the mail might look like to the end user he will get the invoice and he will receive the invoice along with his name in the body this is how the output should be for us let's go ahead and start implementing this thing so for now i'll just try to reuse this particular email i'll just mark it as unread and in my project i will have to use outlook application for that i'll just search for outlook and here are a few of these actions available to us that can be used. Let me drag launch outlook and it will just create an instance out of it. I'll just save this. And then once we launch outlook, what would we do manually? We'll try to read them, right? So that's what we will do. There is an activity or action here which is called as retrieve email messages from outlook here as you can see it takes up the instance from this which is outlook instance and it is asking for the account so i'll just try to provide my account here which is shrad kumar raju at the rate outlook.com so this is what you can give right here it should be this email id here 
for you it can be maybe your company's email so you can just give that particular thing once that is there we are done with it and this says mail folder so which folder should it point to so there can be many other folders available like drafts send items deleted items processed rss fields but we are actually looking for inbox so this is what i'll give here inbox and then what emails would i like to go ahead with i will only try to get the 100 emails and then once this is able to retrieve them let's mark them to read and if i want to apply any filters like should i consider only a set of users and their email ids then i can just provide it for now let's leave it okay any any field that you're not aware of uh, you don't understand please hover right here at this i icon and you'll be able to have a look at it and then if two contains a particular email id then only you want to consider then you can try to populate this particular field for simplicity let's not make it too complex let's keep it simple and then subject let's explore this subject contains there might be a situation where you might be getting a lot of emails every day but you would not want to retrieve all those emails right sometimes you might only be interested in few emails with a specific subject for that purpose let me take a part of it which is invoices i've just copied this and i'll just try to paste it here so this particular subject if it contains invoices that particular email will be retrieved and then body contains in a similar way you can also take any text here else you can just leave it and there is an option called attachments what does this mean if you want to save the attachments available in the mail then you have to select save attachments if you don't want to save them do not save the attachments is the option then let's go ahead with save attachments and where should we save it this would be this particular folder for me so i'll just go here and copy this whenever you are trying to implement this particular implementation please try to replace all this particular things with your appropriate addresses i'll just place it here and whatever comes out of this action will be stored in retrieved emails so that's what we will have this would be a list because it will try to fetch all the available items or all the available mails in inbox which are 100 and which have the subject invoices in it okay so let me save this great so if i just run this particular flow it should be able to launch the excel and also retrieve the emails from it let me run this great that's there i think let me go here to this flow variables and click on this button so here are we so this thing has one item which says retrieved emails zero and then the body of this is this as expected and as you can see the attachment should be there right here so it has got three attachments zero one two great so this is how you would be able to use this information later on let me close this this is done guys as you can see as there were already three records available right here it has created another three with different names so let me delete this for now the duplicate ones yeah assuming this is what the scenario would be once we download the attachments what we have to do right now we have to open each one of this invoices and try to fetch email id and the name out of this particular invoices so that we can send this invoice to that specific or uh, that particular person to do that we have to be in a position where we can get all these files one by one 
So as we have already used, let's go ahead and try to use the action called files in folder. This expects the folder from where it has to pick the files. If you want to apply any filters, you can give it right here, but we don't want any filters for now. Let's give the folder itself. This would be again this folder. So I'll just give this and all the files would be retrieved and will be stored in this variable called files, which would be a list. Let me save this. As you can see, you have used a particular folder path here and also here. So wouldn't it be a good practice to store it in a variable which could be reused anywhere else? Okay. For that, let me copy this, save this and I'll just create a variable for this. Set variable and I'll just name this as invoice folder. Great, and I'll just paste this value here. So there's nothing but invoice folder is a container into which you have a value called this particular thing. So I can directly pass this variable to this and this. So that if tomorrow this path changes, I only have to make some changes to this action here. I'll just change this rather than changing it here, changing it here and all that. So let me go ahead and replace this with the variable, this thing, select, save and here also I'll just delete this and use this. So one thing you can do to try out different things that you have just now implemented is if I just go ahead and run it, it will again launch Outlook and retrieve emails and then save them to folder. This is something that we have already tested. So let's disable this actions. Okay, this is done. Sorry, I have disabled this. Disable this. Yeah. So this is what we can do. This has to be there because we are using up this variable right here. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. The reason why I have disabled this, I hope you have understood because I don't want this action to be happening again and again when I'm just implementing the other steps. Okay, we will just enable them at the end again when we try to run the overall flow. So let me go ahead and check this particular files variable and what are the different items available in it. So it has got three items in it, parts of each of those particular invoices, the name of it, extension of it, the full path of it and all this when it was created and every details that are available for that particular file, you will be able to get them. Great. So we have three files in our container, which is nothing but files and how would we go ahead and use them i'll try to go through each one of that particular invoice for that i have to go ahead and use for each this is an iterator which will help us move from one file to other file this is what we do right maybe if you have a bunch of apples in a basket you pick up one maybe you cut it Maybe you pick up the other one, you just juice it up and you pick the other one and you just throw it away. For doing these actions, you have to have that particular item one by one in your hand. So that's what we are doing by using for each. So every time for each goes from top to bottom, it will have one item in it, which will be useful to us. So I'll just pass files variable which has the items in it. I'll just click on save. 
so this item will have the files available in it every time this goes from for each to end now now what we have to do the number one step that we have to do right now is extract information from that particular invoice so just type pdf you will find different actions available to us when working with pdfs so the first option is extract text from pdf extract tables from pdf extract images from pdfs but we are only interested in text so i'll just drag this and as you can see it is expecting the file path we know that the file path for the first one this would be available in this item at this particular time so we'll just pass current item to it and we want to extract all the pages yes if it's not then you can mention single page page number and all that but for now we are not bothered about it i'll just give it as all and whatever data we have in that particular invoice would be stored in extracted pdf text let's save this great guys so for now i think we should be able to read the information from pdf but we can't confirm it because there could be any exceptions that might come while we are trying to implement a solution so let's go ahead and confirm if it's working let me take a message box to confirm it i'll pass this value to this just to check if it we are just to check if we are able to fetch the information from invoice i'll not fill up any information i'll just click on save so shall we go ahead and check if it's working for every file have clicked on run and as we can see it was able to fetch the information of the first invoice let me click on ok and this is sharat so it should be second one and this is the third one where we don't have an email great so for us it's working so what is the next thing that we have to implement now we should go ahead and try to fetch the email and the name out of this particular invoices for that we have to make ourselves comfortable with this particular technique called regular expression regular expressions are widely used in programming they are very helpful when we try to fetch some information based on a pattern where we want to fetch some information or we want to replace some information and in all the scenarios our situations a lot of applications use regular expressions in it regular expressions are used in almost all of this programming languages like python dot net java javascript and many of them so let's go ahead and try to use this technique to extract some information from the invoices i would definitely recommend you to go through at least a small one hour video on regular expression on youtube and try to get yourself comfortable with it because this is something that you will end up using a lot as an rpa developer or any any programming role so please go ahead and try to learn more about regular expressions but for now i'll just keep it simple if you want to fetch information out of a text that we have right now in extracted pdf text we have to use parse text action this is the action that we would have to use now and as you can see it is asking for the text to parse which is nothing but the whole data which is extracted pdf text i'll pass this and then text to find what text should we find we just want to fetch the email out of this whole text for that it is asking are you going to pass any pattern i'll say yes by enabling this and i'll have to just pass a pattern right here i have googled few of this particular patterns and i found one interesting pattern which was working for me i'll just take this copy it all this files available right here will be available to you at the end of each project so you can download them i'll just 
paste it right here and as you can see it is taking me to stack overflow and then you can try to find out the one that works for you okay guys uh, the reason why i'm just showing you this approach is you might be afraid of programming sometimes i have seen it a lot people get scared when they try to get something similar to this they say i'm not from programming background and i don't understand complex codes and all that so i would suggest you to google for that particular requirement and try to see if that solution exists because the programming has been there for almost 30 plus years and most of the things that you might need at your office uh, for your personal works will be available over the internet so you don't have to remember everything but you should be intelligent enough to get them corrected you might not get the exact requirement or exact code that you want but you might get a code and you have to make some changes to it so here i've just searched for regular expression for emails and i have got few links and i found this link very useful for the implementation if i scroll down there are a lot of these things that you can see so let me go ahead and try using this you could have used this you could have used this and all of these things but let me go ahead and try this one so i'm right here this is a friend for you maybe if you are regularly working with regular expressions because i have been i use a lot of regular expressions at my office and for my projects so this is the go-to tool for me okay so you can just place your regular expression that you have copied right here let's start giving some sample text so that we can understand if it's able to catch the pattern sharat at rate gmail.com is my email id as you can see it is unable to highlight this particular email that means this regular expression is not working for us okay so here is where your regular expression skills might come into handy as you can see there are a lot of characters that are present in this regular expression as i hover over this it says matches any non-word character that means other than character anything should be available in front of this particular regular expression so because of which it is unable to highlight this as there is some text after this but there is no text before it so what you have to do is just try to remove the backslash w as soon as i do that it is able to highlight it right and you can also remove this if needed great so this is where you have to understand which character represents what type of meaning as you can see there are a lot of things that you can learn from here a quick reference okay this works for us so i'll just go ahead and copy this from here or you can just control a control c i'm going back to my implementation and i'll just paste this pattern once this is done then there is an option called as we have already checked this value is regular expression because for us this is a regular expression which we want to pass and find any pattern that matches this and then we have an option called start parsing at position so what does this mean this simply means from where you want to identify this so you have a lot of data which is available are coming out of invoice and you want to start from the start position you want to start for an email id you want to look for an email id from the start of the document to the end of the document so there should be zero else you can change it to 2020 it just represent the position from where you want to check for an email and then you have an option called first occurrence only there might be a situation where there can be multiple email ids in invoices there you can go ahead and just disable this so that it will find out all the occurrences of email ids so this changes to matches matches is a variable of type list if i enable this as we are only interested in getting first instance so this becomes match which is just a single variable okay to can hold only one while matches can hold multiple number of items in a list form so for now i'll just enable this and then 
the value that matches with this pattern will be saved in match variable. So let me change this to email ID. And then save this. So because we want to confirm it if it really works, so I'll just go ahead and take a message box and try to display the value email ID. Okay, I'll just click on save. So let me go ahead and try to run this flow to check if we are able to fetch or extract the email out of invoice. So it will just try to so it will just try to get all the files from the folder. This is the text which comes out of the invoice one. And as per our expectations, this should come out from this message box. Great, we are able to achieve it. This is how simple it is. Okay, if you learn regular expressions, at least the basics of it, you would be able to do far away from a lot of people. Okay, because most of them just copy paste it, which works actually. But if you have a good grip on this subject, you will be able to do more out of it. So this is how we are able to fetch it. As there is no value of email here, let's see what it will show. It will just show an empty value. Great. So this is done. So in the same way, we should be able to fetch the name that we have. And I say name, we should be able to fetch this Mr. Raju from here, Mr. Sharat Raju from here and Miss Santoshi from here. And what do you get in your mind when you see this kind of values and you have been given a task of fetching this information. Now, we'll directly go to Google and start typing how to fetch first name where we have prefixes like salutations. You might go ahead and start typing regex for first names with salutations right and enter then there are a lot of results that you have to go through and start picking up the one that best suits for you let me go right here and you can just scroll through it as you can see i think this might work for you as it has doctor mr mrs and miss and there is some text followed after this okay let me go ahead and start picking this thing i'll copy this and then i'll go to this and just enter the regular expression and I'll give some text here after this maybe. I'll just go ahead and start giving some name here called Sharat with the prefix Mr. And I find it is unable to recognize this particular text. Right? What would be the problem? Maybe as you can see, it is expecting this to be the first word which is not so let me remove this and also remove this and then there is doctor or mr mrs or miss so this is matching dot is also matching and this word sharat is matching with this but then it is expecting something else which is a space so I can remove all this thing which is not needed for me. So I can remove till this point, backspace and then this. So even now I think it's not working. The reason behind this is there is a space. So I have to remove this also. And this is able to find Mr. Dot Sharath and I'll just keep a plus here. Sorry plus here and it is able to find this and anything after this it will not take it if i just type again maybe mrs something i should find it out yeah it is there so this is how 
you will find some help from the stack overflow maybe and then after that you have to modify it according to your need so this is how you will be able to get some initial help from google where you will find some regular expression which is closely related to our requirement and with your knowledge of regular expressions you can just modify it based on your requirement so that it can match the words that you need to extract so that is what we have done right here we have taken that and then modified it based on our requirement so this is good for us so i'll just control a control c and then here i'll just take another parse text i'll drag it right here and then the whole text is extracted pdf text from here we have to find this pattern just enable is regular expression and this should be there this should also be there and this would be and then save okay and then as we want to confirm if we are able to fetch the first name of it which is name we'll also give that name here in the message box i'll just have a new line and then add name here and then select and then save so after this i'll just try to have a quick run of it looks like it has read the invoice and it was able to fetch the first name out of invoice There is the second one and for the third one we don't have an email so we didn't get the email but we only received the first name that's it so we were successfully able to fetch the email and the first name the last thing that we have to do now is shoot out an email to this person with this name in the body for that we'll go to outlook again outlook under outlook we have send email message so we want to do this for every file that we have at hand so outlook instance is not available for us reason being this is disabled so just enable this and also enable this great so if i just come back here you can see this outlook instance here and it is expecting the account from where you want to send out an email for me this is shrad kumar raju at rate outlook.com i'll just provide the same thing here okay and send email message from which account it would be this account itself and to whom should i send it i have to send email to the person's email id which is available in the invoice so this would be the email id variable for us so i'll just go here pick the email id and select great and then cc i don't want to cc anyone or bcc anyone the subject would be just take it as maybe invoice me and then body here i can just type hi hi what hi the person's name in name variable so i'll just select that and then please find the attachment that's it guys so what it will do is it will send out an email to this email id that's it guys so what it will do is it will try to send out an email to this email id which is available in the invoice mentioning the person's name which is extracted from this invoice itself and then also attach this invoice to that particular email for that there is an option called attachments you can go here because you know that the file path is available in current item i'll just select that and click on save so with this it should be able to send out an email to this person's email id
if you observe there is a flaw here that is nothing but for the third invoice that we have which is this which is this one where we don't have an email even for this particular invoice it will try to send out an email which will eventually fail to handle that what we have to do is for the cases where the email id or the name is not available in the invoices we will send those emails to a person who can process them manually maybe to achieve that we'll go ahead and take if statement where is this if yeah i'll take this after we fetch the email id and name we'll try to validate it for this we'll try to validate the values available in email id and the name so here we'll just take out these things from here and then the meaning of this percentiles here is nothing but you're trying to explicitly specify that anything inside this please try to consider as an programmatical expression that's the only meaning so we are trying to validate if email id not equal to empty empty and name is not equal to empty for empty i'm just using single quotations okay here also single quotations so what does this mean if email id is not equal to null and name not equal to null if this results to true then if it is equal to true again we are just comparing it if this results to true then true will be equal to true so in that case you will go ahead and send out an email to that specific person else so we have to take else right here and then if that doesn't happen then what we have to do we have to take the same condition you can just go here click here just to save some time copy this and then come to else if paste it and here if this is equal to this and if this is equal to this and here this will be or the reason for or is if at least one of them is equal to null then we have to send out an exception mail to a person who can actually start processing this particular invoices manually for this we have got or here and this will also be true because if this is true then this will be equal to true so we can send out an email again okay and the reason why we had and is because we want this two conditions to be true in case if we want to send out an email to a customer so that's where and and that's where or here okay so this time i'll try to copy this itself maybe control c control v and just drag it here and this time we'll change few of these parameters the first one will remain the same the account will remain the same and here the person to whom we have to send will change because this time we are not getting it from invoices because for this particular invoice there might be no email id right so that's where we are sending it out to someone so this time it will be an hard coded value so i'll try to send it to my gmail id assuming i am the person who handles this particular sending emails process in case of any mistakes in the invoices so this will go to this specific persons all those invoices where there's some issue with email missing or name missing in that case all those invoices will be sent to this specific person you can also remove this i team please find the attachment there is missing value for 
email or name please verify it manually so this is how we handle it in our organizations and then save as we are done with the implementation let's have a look at from the start to the end so first we are trying to launch the outlook and then we are assigning a variable where we are assigning the path to a variable called invoice folder so that we can reuse it anywhere else and then we are trying to retrieve the emails from outlook with specific conditions and then because this will download all the documents to a specific folder we are trying to get files in folder to fetch all those files and after that we have used for each so that we can loop through all these files first time we will have the first file with us which we will read out by using this action called extract text from pdf for confirming it if for confirming if we have for confirming if we were able to extract the information we have used a display message and then we are using parse text here with a regular expression this to find out all the emails available in our text and then we are saving it to email id and then we have done the same for this particular parse text and after that we have displayed it on the screen and then we have an if condition where we have some rules given because we want to have a flow where it decides on whom to send out an email if we have an email and name in our invoice then this will be sent to that person itself if not this email and name any one of this is missing in that case it will be sent out to a person who handles this invoices so that he can manually process them by calling them up and asking for their emails or whatever which can never be done by using the pot at least for now going forward in the future may be possible and then we are ending it so after this is done we have to safely close the outlook instance that we have for now so for that i'll just use this let me drag it at the end and it has automatically taken this and then save so this is done guys so what i'll try to do is let me go back to the folder and delete this come back and also mark this email as unread because we have this condition given in our flow right here we have this option unread email messages only so this is done let me go ahead and try to run this as we can see it should have downloaded the files yeah these are there and as soon as i click on ok it should display me this email id and it should have triggered an email to that particular person and then again click on ok and this is my email id and this is the third person for him the flow has gone to this and it is done let me check if i have received any email as you can see i have received an email with the invoice as attachment and it says hi mr sharath please find the attachment and for the email for which we didn't have uh, the email id let's see what email we have got for that as you can see we have received an email to the hard coded email id that we have given sharathkumarraju@gmail.com if i just open this i have the invoice attached and it says there is missing value for email or name please verify it manually from here the person to whom we have sent like this particular email he will try to call that person through some source and ask for an email and send out the invoice to him manually so this is how we can handle some exceptions which are expected to come as we try to automate something great so throughout this particular implementation i hope you were able to learn how to communicate with emails and then how to work with pdf files and also 
explode few of the regular expressions which are commonly used at enterprise level go ahead and please try to implement this particular solution and also if you are someone who is trying to create your own invoices i'll be providing you with a link from where you can start creating your own invoices because the invoices that i have used up here will contain my email ids and those will be spammed so please start creating your invoices with your email ids or with your cousin's email ids so this is how you'll be able to create your invoices and this is how i, I have done for myself okay you can remove whatever fields are not necessary and you can start populating these fields and start experimenting with invoices you can change the layouts you can change the currencies and all these things and just click on download to have it on your system let's meet in the next session now we'll be working on a process called update currency exchange rates process here this is how the flowchart will look like the process starts by retrieving some data from database and then based on it it will try to fetch the latest currency exchange rates via api and then update the fetched value into the database so this is what we have to do and we will also look at different business rules that we have to consider and build our automation solution these are a few different things that you will start learning one is how to retrieve data from database which would be a new concept for you and then you will also learn api automation which is very widely used in enterprise automations and then updating data into database and then other thing which is exception handling let's go ahead and look at the particular process i have tried to note them down here so that you can have clarity while you start building the solution the first thing is executing sql query to fetch the data so this is the query that we will use to fetch all the information that is available right here and then for each row in the table we receive with verified customer value as y do the following so what does this mean so what does this line mean it means that each one of this row you have to go through and then you should only operate on the records where the verified customer column is y so with this understanding we know that for this fourth row with the value verified customer as n will not be updating this row and then returning back this line simply means that we have to fetch the exchange rates of this base currency for this transfer currency what does that mean we have to pick base currency which is usd and we have to find what would be the value for one usd converted to inr so basically i think it should be usd to inr let's see how much it is so it's 81.73 one unit of usd is converted to inr then it is 81.73 so this value we have to find out as we can see to find this value we need the currency which is base currency and the currency which is a transfer currency right so we have this and this from the database this and this this line simply means that we have to find that value so once we hit it we have to extract the exact value which is this value so this was pointing out to hitting it and this is to extracting it and then comes multiply the above value with amount column value to get the final amount to be transferred that means that whatever 81.73 we have got will multiply that with this amount the amount so that we can get the final amount to be transferred so this is what we have to update back as we can see execute a sql query to update the final amount into transfer amount column this has to be updated and also will update the last modified date so that we can know when this was updated so this is what we have to do assuming you work for a bank where you were asked to write a program to update this database every day with the updated exchange rates let's go ahead and start implementing the automation
and for your reference you will find all these links and all these queries right in your project folder if you are new to sql then i have tried to share some references for you you can go through this and try to get yourself familiar with database concepts and if you are new to api then i also have included few references which will give you a good understanding of what is api and how to perform some operations on it and this text file here will give you the link of the api url that we'll be using and these are the process steps and going ahead these are the connections that we'll be using all these files here will be helpful to you when you start the implementation and if you are new to sql database then you can use this installation guide to install this software into your system let's go ahead and start implementing the project the project would be six project six and the process name would be exchange rates right so this would be the process name and then just click on create to create the workspace for us so as soon as the workspace is ready we can start with the implementation so if i just go through the step one it says execute sql query to fetch the data so what does that mean before going further i'll just try to give a brief introduction to database so that you understand the terms that i might end up using during this automation so this is the blog that i found interesting so maybe you can go through it you can find the link at the end of the project so it just explains the basics of sql okay so what is a database it will just explain you the users of it why it is required so it's just a storage used by all the enterprises to have the records being maintained and then you can perform different sql operations like you can start creating databases a database can have number of tables and then you can insert some data into it and update data delete data in a simple real life situation what i can explain you is databases are being used by any application you consider maybe if you consider an application like swiggy then they keep track of whatever transactions you perform with them maybe if you order something today that goes down into their database if tomorrow they want to have some analysis running through your transactions they can do it and if they feel something is not needed they will just delete it if you are a user to them today you there will be a new entry in their users database with your name and tomorrow if you deactivate your account it will be removed so that's how it works so there are different applications of it and features of it and more of them and then there are basic queries that we do so an action that we do or perform on databases to fetch some information or to update any information we call them queries so there are different type of queries we have most common are create table and then inserting some data into table and then selecting okay if there is already a table available we can select data from it and then we can drop it if tomorrow if there is a department called hr in your organization or if there is a table called say sports if your company decides to stop the sports activities it can just drop the table okay so because it is no longer needed similar to that you can truncate it alter the table and many such activities you can also delete it you can update it i will definitely recommend you to go through this article this link over here so that you get yourself familiar i don't think it will take more than half an hour or 15 minutes for you to give it a look okay once this is done once you're good with structured query language which is sql we can go ahead and start implementing the automation the first action that we have to pull in is let's go to the database section of it and we'll try to drag open sql connection here it just expects the connection string a connection string in layman terms is nothing but a similar entity like url so if you want to go to google you just type google.com 
and if you want to go to amazon you just type amazon.com similar to that if you want this action to perform something we want to redirect it to some resource right because if there is a resource available which is this for us everyone can't be accessing this because they might delete my tables or they might update my tables or do whatever they want to restrict that we will have some passwords and usernames the credentials basically to prevent any manipulations of the data that we maintain we have to use the same thing right here so that it this particular action can connect to the database to facilitate that this are the strings that you will be using if your database authentication is windows authentication then you will just use this where you don't have username and password but if it's sql server authentication then you need login and password so that's where you might end up using this here this will stay always the same and here this server this name comes from right here and then database is nothing but exchange rates for us which is this i will let you know on how to create a database and how to create a table like this into which we can start inserting the data deleting the data you can just place them right here and start using it so i'll just copy this this would be available for you at the end of the project just try to change this value which can be found or taken from right here as soon as you launch your server management studio you'll find this value i'll just paste it and then save it let me run it once to check or verify if it's able to successfully connect with the database it is able to go through it because it says is closed false because it's open the connection is open right now and later we have to close it as soon as we open it we have to close it to keep the environment clear and it's also a good practice to close all the connections that were opened so we'll just click on save with this we are sure that we'll be able to open up a connection and close the connection to the database and now the next thing that we have to do is we have to fetch the data from the database for that we have an action called execute sql query i'll just drag it in between and then as we can see it takes a connection that has come out of open sql connection and this expects a statement i will include all these queries right here in a text file which you will find at the end of the project so i'll just go ahead and so i'll just try to use this copy and i'll just paste this so this is how i'll be able to go ahead and start fetching the data from the database let's see if we are able to do it run So I can find that it was successfully able to retrieve the information. It has got around 3 plus 3, 6 records. Let me verify it with the database. Here we have 6 records. So this particular task is done. Let me close this and the first task is done. But this might not happen to you because you don't have a database in your system if you are trying to implement it along with me so please go ahead and use this commands that are available to you at the end of the project just download it and you can go ahead and just click on new query and this would be available in a text file just copy this and paste it right here and click on execute then again pick the second one and remove this sorry i don't think it was copied just execute this so that this would create transaction table and then go ahead and then insert some data into it and then that's it so you'll not be using this currently because we have already we'll be using this at the time of fetching the information which we have just now done 
and this we will use when updating the data so the next step for us is for each row in table we receive with verified customer value as y do the following so let's go ahead and implement this logic because i have to do this for every item available in this particular query which is query result i have to take f for each so that i can iterate through each one of that i'll just take for each here and pass the query result to it and then save so this time every row here will be available in current item i'll go ahead and take an if condition drag it here and mention current item which is the row for us in it what was the column name let me go here the column name was verified customer here i'll just open the brackets close the brackets and in double quotes i'll place verified customer because in this row we have want this column if this is equal to y then we want to proceed else we want to skip that particular row let's take else and just copy this statement copy it and paste it here and this would be yen right then save it so this is how only for records with verified customer as y we would be able to go ahead and perform the actions with verified customers as n we will just skip them so let's verify if it's working by taking a message box I'll take current item and I'll try to display account number again square brackets inside that account number and save let's go ahead and try to run it as you can see we have got 1 2 3 and it has skipped 4 because for 4 it's yen click on okay click on okay this is done so we are done with the second step also for now this is also done and now as a step 3 we have to hit this particular site let's go ahead and do it so this is how the site would look like where you would be able to get the exchange rates via api so it's very simple you just have to create your account here just input your email id and then click on get free key and then once this is activated you might receive a link you can just click on that or come back here and just click on sign in and this is how it will look like this would be your unique api key for me this is the api key and this is a sample and api that we have with us i'll just copy it and then paste it and hit go so as soon as we hit to this particular url we get a response similar to this the result says success and there are few other fields available here which is conversion rates under which we have 1 usd is equal to it is equal to 0.9077 euro and it is also equal to 81.7551 inr and similar to that you will get all the conversion rate for all the currencies available all over the world so you can just go ahead and use them up so this is what we have to fetch when we give usd here as a base currency 
as it is for us right now. If it's USD, then we will pass USD right here in this link by hitting this particular API. And if it's Euro, we will just replace this USD with Euro. Okay, I will just go ahead and let's type Euro here and hit on enter. As you can see, one Euro is equal to one euro is equal to 90.0182 INR. Okay, so when it's euro, as it is for, no, it's GBP. Okay, so when it's USD, you have to find the INR, which would be similar to this right here. You have to just fetch this particular value from the response and then multiply it with the amount to get this value. You have to just do that and before we implement anything related to api let's go ahead and try to understand what exactly is an api so this is a blog i have gone through and i found this could be an easy start for you if you are completely new to apis so this will be available at the end of the project so just download it and go through this link Okay, give it a read and think about it so that you understand the importance of API in any application development. So API stands for Application Programming Interface. This is how it looks like you are the user. Assuming you are the user, you might use mobile or desktop to perform some payment using an active internet connection. So it goes to an API and then hit the server and then hit the database. So API is nothing but an interface that allows you to communicate with an another application. So in every day, you use a lot of applications that give you access to APIs. I'll just show you a small example of it. I'll try to give a comparison between few elements so that you understand what is an API. Customers, when we go to a restaurant, we are the customers and waiter is a person who is connected in between you and the kitchen so you don't actually have to know what is being prepared in the kitchen and how it's being served and all that you are only concerned about your food item that you have ordered for so waiter is similar to api so here assuming you are doing a payment by using paypal you have multiple options through which you can do the payment okay Considering PayPal is an application, it uses API to detect the amount from your account because you might have an account with Citibank or Bank of America or State Bank of India. So here the PayPal is not required to have your data, right? It, it doesn't care about your data. It just communicates with whatever bank you have an account with. It says, hey, I have a request from your customer to detect his amount. So this is the authorization key that I have. Maybe you input some OTP or a PIN, which the PayPal person or the PayPal app provides to your concerned bank to authorize you and boom, your amount will be detected. So that's what we can consider as an example. So going ahead, so you can just think of many other APIs that comes into picture. You can just give a read what are the different type of APIs and purpose of it. As you can see, different types of APIs, private, public, partner. Okay. And then there are different type of operations that you can perform on APIs like post method, get method, patch method, and many of them. Okay. Just give it a read. And there is an, another blog also which could give you a more elaborated meaning of APIs and REST APIs. As you can see, this is the tablet, our mobile, our desktop that we are using. We are the application. There's a lot of request to the server. Okay, based on that, we will get some response. So please give it a read. Here, API REST endpoint is nothing but for us, this is the endpoint. That's it guys, please give it a read. Okay, now back to our application, exchange rates API. 
we have to hit to this URL. I'll just let you know what do I mean by hit soon. We are back to our project and let's go ahead and clear this up. And under HTTP, we have invoke web service. You have to just drag this in and it expects an URL. So this is what I was talking about. This would be the URL for you for now. Let me copy this and paste it right here. And then we want to get some information. So it will be get. If you want to push some information, then it will be post. Okay. And let me change this to JSON because we are interested in JSON response. This would also be JSON. Yeah. So we don't have custom headers. We don't have any request body, nothing. Okay. It's a plain, simple HTTP call that we are making. So maybe for your process, it might be a little complex, but if you understand this concept, you'll be easily able to do that too. So let me click on save. Before that, as you can see, whatever response that we get after this hit, it is being stored in web service response. Okay, and there is an, another thing called status code. So when we work with APIs, there are different type of status codes being returned to us. This particular code indicates whether the hit has failed or the hit was successful or if there were any issues. So a code of 200 specifies that the hit was successful. If you get something starting with four, it means it was a failure. If I just search for HTTP status codes, I'll get a list of them. As you can see, this is how they might look like. 200 means a success. And then partial information, 203. Most of the times you'll either get 200 or 400. That's it. Anything starting with four has some issue. Anything starting with two is good. That, sh that understanding should be more than enough. And now coming back. So this response will be stored in web service response. So this will hold this value that we have just seen. Okay, so that in the next step, we would be able to extract the value out of this. So we are right here, I'll just click on save. So shall we go ahead and see if we are able to fetch the information? Let's do it. I'll just run it. And we can see it was a success. Great. So if we see it is always hitting to USD, right? For even for the second one, it will hit the USD itself. But for us, it would be GBP. That would be a problem then. Let me go back and stop the process and select invoke web service here. Double click it and we have to make this dynamic because this should change according to the row item. So I'll just remove it and replace it with query result. It should be current item. It should be current item as we have the items right here. Okay, great. Let me go ahead and rerun it. I'm executing it again. And first record. As you can see, the base currency is USD. And the INR for this would be 81.7551. It's it keeps changing and the second time also I think it should be USD it's USD as this is USD and next time it should be GBP let me click on OK and this time three and it's GBP great so we were able to handle this issue by passing the dynamic value and this time one GBP 
1 GBP equal to how much INR? It's 103.0851. Great. So it will happen for all those particular entries in the database. So this time it should be INR, I guess so. So it's INR. Great. So this we are able to achieve. So we were able to implement the step three also. Now our task is to fetch that particular value out of it. So from this, we are passing USD considering the first record and we have to get the INR value of it so that we can multiply that value with this amount to get this. So let's go ahead and try to extract it. Here, let me take a variable or create a variable I'll just let you know the purpose of it. I'll just take it as transfer currency. Currency and then this would be current item and in the brackets Single quotes and this would be transfer currency. Okay, so this would give us INR for the first record as we know. And using this, we'll try to fetch the value of it. Let's go ahead. Now, because we have the response in a variable called web service response, which is in JSON format, we have to convert it into JSON object so that we can easily be able to fetch any particular item out of this text. For that, I'll just search for JSON. Here it is. I'll just take this, place it here and it expects the value. Okay. And we have the value as web service response. This we want to convert into custom object. Okay. Which is nothing but JSON as custom object. This would be produced out of it. This conversion is needed for us so that we can extract values easily from the text that we get out of the API hit. Let me save this and this would be the final object or the variable from which we can fetch the final amount. For us it is, for us it would be INR value for the first one, right? Okay. Now I'll just take another variable. drag it here and I'll just name it as exchange rate and then right here I know that my target variable right now is I now know that my input variable is JSON as custom object variable. So I'll just choose this and click on save. Okay. And I know that this variable contains all the information, but is it what I want right now? No, I just want the value that comes out of this, which is nothing but this value, right? For me to do that, I know that this starts from here and there are a few nodes available here. I have to reach to this particular value. From there, I have to reach to INR or GBP, whatever it is, the transfer currency to reach till this point. So are you guys able to relate it to any real time example? So if I ask you for an address and you give me some address, so in that case, what I'll try to do is first, I'll try to come to that city and from there, I'll try to come to a particular lane. So this is how this is structured. So we have all this data, but 
the first thing that we have to do is we have to go to this from where we'll be able to reach out to any of this currencies. To do that, let me copy this. And moving back to this, I'll open this and similar to how we retrieve information from each row, we'll open up the bracket like this and then single quotes and then this value. So this should give us this particular information ignoring this because just now I have mentioned that I'm only interested in this part of the data and you can just ignore all of this information and once we are into this the next step would be this value right whatever it is so let me consider INR then I'll just open up another bracket and pass on the value into it Here for us it is transfer currency. You are already inside percentiles so you can remove them and click on save. That's it. This particular step here represents that you have the text and you are going inside it to this node which is conversion rates. This one and even from there you are going a step down which is this whatever currency. It can be GBP, it can be USD or it can be INR that's it let's go ahead and see if we are able to fetch the transfer currency i'll just take this display message and let me mention the amount what was the variable that is exchange rate right it would be exchange rate let me save this let me go ahead and see if it's working so for this we get the base currency as usd that's why it is one here and then for us it's inr right so this is what is expected and this is what we got and again here it's USD and as we can see the transfer currency was also INR this time. So we had got the same exchange rate. Okay and this time 3 and here it would be GBP that is what we have here GBP and we should get it converted to USD. So we should get this exchange rate. Let me click on OK. And this is what it is 1.2614. 1 GBP is equal to 1.2644 USD. Okay, yeah, great, it's working. Great, so we were able to implement this also. Now we will move on to the step 5 where we will multiply the exchange rate with amount column value to get the final amount to be transferred. So now we have the exchange rate and we also have the amount. We'll multiply the exchange rate with this to get this value. Let's go ahead. I know it would be a little complex if you are new to database and API, but I really recommend you to go through this video once or twice if you don't understand it, because this is a bit of complex topic maybe for someone who is very new to database and API concepts. But if you can master this, you're far better than any rpa developer available there in the market so i'll just take another so i'll just take another variable just drag it and name this variable as transfer amount right this is the final transfer amount and then here i'll just take as exchange rate multiplied by what the amount column this column here so it would be current item you can just remove this because anything inside percentile is considered as an programmatical expression so you can just remove the extra percentiles here open bracket close bracket single quotes in between amount 
and then save it. So this time we are expecting the transfer amount to be a multiplication of exchange rate and the amount. I mean this amount. The transfer amount will be this, 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 this. Great. So we are done with this step also. Now we are left with the other one where we will update the database with whatever values we have right now. Execute SQL query to update the final amount into transfer amount column. To achieve that, we already have a query given to you. You just have to replace it. You just have to place this thing in your you just have to use this particular statement here and modify it according to your need. I'll just copy this and under database, I'll drag this here and I'll just paste this. As you can see, it says update transaction table, which is nothing but this table, set transfer amount which is this and then set transfer amount is equal to some value. What would be this value? This is nothing but the value that we get from here, which is transfer amount. So just click on this X and insert that value right there. Just select it. This is done and modified date would be get date. So this would be current system date will be inserted to modified date column and then so we have to set this values where because it will not understand where you have to update this value. If we don't mention this, it don't know where to insert this value set. Maybe here, 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 which which exact row you want to replace it at or you want to update it at. So we have to use where clause where account number is equal to here. I have given a hard coded value. You can take it off and insert current item and inside current item as you will have the account number you can mention this so it becomes dynamic your single quote your single quote and close bracket great so this should work for us save it so this will work as expected and we are done with this step also Great, so this will be done for all the records. Let's go ahead and see if it's working. With this particular implementation, the bot should be able to update all these values. Let's have a look at the timestamp to, to confirm if it's working. I'll just go ahead and try to run this. So right now it is working on the account number one. It is hitting the endpoint, it has fetched this information and the exchange rate was this and it should have updated the first record. Let me go back to here and let me run this again. As we can see, it has updated it with a new exchange rate. So this amount will be transferred by the agent that will be working on the payments. Let me go ahead and click on OK. So here's the second one, okay, third one, okay, and again, okay, and fifth one, because fourth one was marked as Y, so it didn't pick it up. This is the final one, and okay. So this is done. Let me go back to the management studio and run this query again. So here are the values that we have. So for all of this, it was updated except this because this is marked as young. So this is how we can work with the database and APIs. So hope you have understood this implementation and you are more confident than before. If someone give you a task of automating an API and also where databases are involved. So you should find all this supporting files at the end of the project 
if you have any queries if you want to seek help please go through them and get the things done and this sql query you'll be able to open up with maybe notepad or anything okay please do that you can use them up in your project just run them to create the database the table and insert some values into it let's meet in the next session